Hello. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. <laughs> <laughs> From the shop, and hopefully we're coming through live and clear. We're just doing a cell phone live this time around. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I had a whole bunch of computer troubles that we had, we've been working through for the last couple days. So, um, unfortunately, yep. or fortunately, however you want to look at it, we got to do this uh, do this whole deal the old-fashioned way <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> with cell phones. Yep, flashback for those who were watching our live streams like three years ago. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Ninja Mouse, um, the swedge block size is 50 pounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, Ernie Beeswick, stick on the grill, Roy, <laughs> on the tube, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a perfect pairing. <laughs> but wait a minute, why ain't I there? What's going on? <laughs> The Western Woodsman, I feel computer trouble pain. Yeah, it never ends. Like, yep. you get through one problem and, like, a couple of weeks later, something else. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So, looks good anyway. Good, good. Glad it's looking good. Hopefully, we're sounding okay. Um, how's the sound, everybody? I know it is what it is, but you can't really do a whole lot about it. Flockhammer finally made a stream. Good to have you. <laughs> good to have you. <laughs> Normally, they're better than this. <laughs> <laughs> usually. Usually. Well, good. Ninja Mouse says, sounds good to me. Good. Tim O'Connor says, hello from downstate. Cool. Here in Michigan. Michael Edwards. Hi, all. Tomorrow is my birthday. Can I get a happy birthday? Well, happy birthday, Michael Edwards. Everybody say hel hello to Michael Edwards and happy birthday. <laughs> See you, Metal. Sorry to hear that you uh, have a cast on your hand as you broke your knuckles. That sounds Ooh. pretty painful. What'd you hit? <laughs> Always got to ask. Oh, Rob, um, basin's going well. Uh, I've got another inch I got to sink it deeper. So it's got to be 11 inches deep and 26 inches in diameter. So I've got a whole other inch I got to drive the bottom down uh, yet. But, but it's, coming, it's coming close. I gave up on it today. It was 81 here. That's probably a 110 by the uh, by the copper while I was heating it and hammering it. So um, I've been sweating like a pig all day. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for sure. Um, the uh, it started off as a 28 inch diameter disc, eighth inch thick, and it's going to be finish out at 26 inches in diameter and 11 inches deep and still roughly a little under eighth inch thick. So it's a lot of copper to move, a lot of heat and hammering. Actually, uh, our illustrious hand model, Thomas, goody moot, friend of ours, come over there a little bit two nights ago and gave me a hand for the first stage of raising on it, which was good. Um, that kind of helped shortcut some of my hammer blows that I have to put into it. But I've done about I think four more rounds of raising today alone on it. So, mm -hmm. yep. What you got, hon? More I'm, questions? Yeah, I was just trying to. Are you behind? The chat froze for a second on this one, so I was just oh, trying to get it reset. Okay. But we're trying to dual phone it here. We are. Yep. Uh, Mountain Home Forge still in the rabbit hole with the fly press, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, deep in the deep in the rabbit hole. Had to take a quick break for this basin. Um, that came in and kind of backed off on that and i got i got quite a few other projects quite a few other jobs i'm working on currently right now trying to get my orders from earlier this year finished up and uh, you know working on those steadily and then yeah a whole bunch of other stuff behind the scenes working on but but there'll be a lot more videos on the fly press you can see her in the back there mm -hmm. yep There'll be a lot more. I've got a whole lot more tooling videos, related tooling videos made up in there. So, Tim O'Connor says, how did we like Lila and all? It Liked was, it. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. It was cool being up on a peninsula. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, got the breeze from all the sides. Mm -hmm. There's more people on that side of the state than what we like. So <laughs> we, we, like uh, we like going to out-of-the-way tourist destinations or, or things that don't have tourists at all. You know what I mean? So out of the way places that are you know kind of secluded but you know so it was a little less secluded than what mm -hmm. what we normally like but we had a good time nonetheless yeah. so yeah st still stayed at a state park 
um, up there, Leland all. And, uh, yeah, of course, you were right, right up at the tip of Peninsula up there. So um, yeah, I mean, it, was it was pretty neat. It was definitely out of the way the state park was. But, yeah, mm-hmm. the Sleeping Bear Dunes, I mean, it's a national lake shore, so it's going to have more traffic to it. Yep. A baguette with a computer says, what is all in the giveaway? What is all in the giveaway? Well. Your baguette. <laughs> you <What>? computer? <laughs> That's his baguette. Username. The baguette, the baguette computer. computer. So, well, I don't know. So, well, t- tonight we're not going to be doing any forging and stuff. Um, just, yeah, we have another. We have another computer, but I'm not bringing it out here. It's it's the editing computer, so I'm not going to bring it out into the shop and let it get all dirty and nastified. So, it's several grand to replace that computer. So. Um, with the one computer that we normally live stream from, since it's being down, we figured we'd just keep the live stream simple, do a cell phone live, and um, you know, just do a Q&A this evening. So I didn't really come prepared with a whole lot of giveaway stuff. We are going to draw for the swedge block tonight, though, so that way we can get that out the deal, uh, out the door. And, you know, that'll be it. I might throw in a few extra, a few extras or something, go walk into the other side of the shop and and grab a couple of blanks my original plan i was hoping to have some um, uh, like tong blanks and things available for this live stream as well but we didn't uh weren't able to get those in in time for this live stream so maybe by the next uh maybe by the next giveaway live stream we'll actually have some blacksmithing tooling uh, to give away and uh you know be able to add that in with the the next swedge block we give away but yeah this evening's swedge block will be what Number six, number seven? Mm-hmm. Six, yeah. Is it number six? Yep. We're in June. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's six. Trip. That means we're halfway done with giving away swedge blocks this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Holland Anvil swedge blocks. So, hey, thank you for the $2, Tim O'Connor. And whoever gave the seven bucks earlier, there was somebody mm-hmm. else who taught, who uh, I almost said tied. <laughs> <Tides. laughs> so, there, there was somebody else who, who uh, super chatted earlier. It, it doesn't show um, if you had chatted before the stream. So um, whoever that was that super chatted early on, we do appreciate you and thank you very much. So, But it all it all definitely helps out. So, Justin Ray, thank you for the $5 super chat. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Greatly appreciate that. Greatly appreciate that. I uh, am wearing a BAM shirt. <laughs> yeah, a BAM shirt. So nice. Mm-hmm. Got to represent BAM from time to time. Mm-hmm. Earlier this week, I was wearing a JK Canvas hat, a BAM shirt, mm-hmm. Kansas Prairie Ford shirt at one point <laughs> this week. We have, we have quite the pile of t-shirts. Yeah, yeah we have like quite we the almost, pile of t-shirts. So. I almost don't have to buy shirts anymore. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's like... Somebody needs to come out with a couple brands of pants besides Alex Steele, right? Like some of you guys yeah. need to come out with some pants merch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Alex Steele and Big Dog Forge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Big Dog Forge, he has Spanx, so, you know, <laughs> or, or, or whatever. He has leggings. Brian Nicholson says, I often see you chatting in on Trenton Ty's live streams. Mm-hmm. Unless he's incognito, you should give him a hard time about missing yours. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would, but I don't know how, how how bad he'd feel about that missing my missing my live stream. So, I try to behave I try to behave myself as much as I can in other people's live streams, and, and uh, except for people I know really really well or I've met in person before, then I'll razz you and give you a hard time. So, because you know you, because you know that I'm joking with you. <laughs> Versus sometimes it doesn't read across like that on the internet. You think you're joking with somebody and they they take offense to it, you know. Mm-hmm. Just cuz text you. sucks. It or doesn't convey emotion. Might be their state of so, mind too, like when you read it. You yeah. Know? Yeah, true. So. Mm-hmm. See Jeff Glenn says I think it's honestly amazing you're giving away stuff to help others learn about the craft. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think it's I think it's really amazing. Um, did we miss the super chat? By the way, there was another super chat that I want to. They're five dollar. Yeah, was it there. Justin Ray. Justin Ray. Okay, just making sure. Um, like, I couldn't do this without the support of the community out here. All of you all showing up. So um, I, I, I'm thankful. I'm just as thankful to you all for that. Uh, you know, again, we're that gushy center. <laughs> right? We're the nougaty center of the kind of thing. We're just this, nice. the hub, you know, so to speak, and and uh, just trying to put things in action. And so, 
again, I'm just thankful for the viewership. I'm thankful for all this love and support we get on a regular basis. And I really do mean that. And that goes, and that kind of brings me into something else I'd like to talk about and just kind of brag on a little bit and just say really a big heartfelt thank you to everybody because some of them are in this stream as well that have bought blanks from us, like blacksmith blanks and things like that helps out so much. Like, like you don't even know and we are so appreciative of that and we get support not only do we get support down that route people showing up doing super chat donations people showing up and just watching our videos daily like you know just just trying to show love and support and all of this the giveaway items and being able to afford all this and camera equipment and and, and doing those things would not be possible just it just wouldn't without the following that we have here on youtube and uh so yeah, credit where credit due. I think you all need to give your guys selves a pat on the back right now. Go ahead. Do it with me. <laughs> but uh, you all deserve a hand clap for sure for all of your support and, and all of your help. And, and uh, yeah, just can't thank you all enough. So just thank you for being here. Even if you've never supported financially, that's fine. You're supporting us right now with your eyeballs and your likes right mm -hmm. and you're commenting so youtube does see that and they're like hey people like to engage with this guy mm -hmm. yep, i think we'll show him to five extra people to the, today mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you all very much we do appreciate each and every last one of you jeff glenn says i wish i could donate money to y'all but i can't even afford equipment i forge with a single hammer and a homemade soup can forge i made hey you're getting started that's all that matters and you're watching again that's support you're watching. That's support enough. So thank you. And thank you all for the super chats that keep popping up there. So we have $5 from Logan Brown. Thank you, Logan Brown. $5 from Brian Nicholson with a keep it up pair. Thank you. <laughs> and $1.99 from Elijah Roush says stuck at work, but thanks for the entertainment. <laughs> well, I don't know how entertaining we're being there, Elijah, but <laughs> appreciate you. Thank you, brother. No. Oh. Somebody else, somebody was asked, Tim O'Connor asked a question there back a bit. Say something about Holland Anvil. Uh, real quick, how quick is Holland Anvil shipping? I bought the cone mandrel from them last week. Bow, bow, bow. You are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Good. I'm glad you bought their cone mandrel. I think um, they ship out most stuff once a week. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they ship out like once a week. Um, I can't really speak as far as their uh, their turnaround on shipping. Um, I mean, we've we've gotten our items fairly quick, but as far as just like buying stuff as a regular customer, I can't really I can't attest to how fast they are at, at, at shipping out their items. So, um, so sorry, I can't necessarily do that. I'd, I'd hate to get it wrong. And say yeah, they ship it out every other day, you know, and then they're like, what are you talking about? So yeah, um, yeah I think they. I, they do it based upon what they have in stock and what they have to cast and machine and things like that. So um, I, I would just go by whatever's on their on their website. But our swedge block got here pretty quick. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, about ten days, I think, maybe from our order placement and and the mm -hmm. giveaway one. So it seems like they normally ship those out within a week of order, or you know, once we give the contact give the contact information for the winner to them. So. Mm -hmm. Robert Lana says should be pretty quick. Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> Bag Baguette with a computer says, love your videos, man. Keep up the good work. Glad you like them. Let's see here. Eugene Taylor says, definitely one of my favorite communities. Well, glad, Eugene. Eugene. Metal Blueberries, hello. <laughs> and Dustin Laurie, thank you for the $5 super chat. Thank you, Dustin Laurie. Oh. See, Gary Brown says, I am avoiding the shop right now. 94 degrees outside. Too hot. It's 81 here. It's 81 here right now, and that's more hot than I like. So, mm -hmm. as you can see, I've went down to the summer beard mm -hmm. and yeah. the summer haircut. Here's only half of the story. <laughs> 81 is way too hot. I was actually going to do a class, a garden bench class in uh, Goshen, Ohio next month. And uh, it was going to be towards the tail end of next month. And yeah, we decided against it. So <laughs> we decided against it. We're going to, 
we ended up moving it to October instead now, um, just because heat, heat wise. They were running a class when I talked to Jamie out at Goshen, and it was, I guess it was a sweat fest like you wouldn't believe. You can ask Rob, <laughs> you can ask Rob Huff about that, um, how hot and sweaty it was. He was there at that class. And uh, so, but I wasn't there, so I couldn't tell you, but all I know is it was like, it was 90 plus there. And it was like 68 here. So I was like, ooh, <laughs> yay, Northern Michigan. Let's do it. <laughs> Robert Lana says, thank you for the kudos on the door knocker on Instagram, Roy. You're welcome. Very um, welcome. Yeah, anybody, if you want to tag us, if you've been inspired or you did something from one of our videos, feel free to tag us on Instagram at Christ Nerd Ironworks. Uh, yeah. Also, I found a new feature. I just started doing this like two days ago. So a couple of you, you who have our blanks and shared pictures of that. Um, it allows us to feature your stuff on our store, and it says um, mm -hmm. photos from the community. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I've been requesting for some of the photos when, where we've been tagged in to be featured that way. So granddads, you're one of them. Yep. <laughs> Rob Huff says, LOL, we tried to kill Bill, Corey, and myself last weekend. <laughs> Gotta stay hydrated. <laughs> Ken Levy says, Roy, you mentioned that you were going to rebuild your power hammer. Is that still in the works? Uh, yep, that's still that's still in the works. Uh, yet, it's going to be a while. And so, it's it's one of those, when I need the power hammer, I need the power hammer, and it's a useful tool. But in the, a lot of the stuff that I do, since I'm not doing very large architectural pieces, I'm not doing something where I need to draw out a ton of material and really reshape big heavy stock, um, a power hammer isn't as useful in in my shop in that way um, but would i like a bigger power hammer yeah for those times because occasionally i get large work or large things to do and it would be nice to just be able to do you know uh say a hammerhead completely under the power hammer you know just be able to like thump out a, a hammerhead if i need it or a new style or something um right now my power, my current power hammer is undersized. I never built it for that size material to begin with, um, so it's a little bit un, it's a little bit undersized to do things like hammerheads and whatnots um, efficiently, I should say efficiently. But there are some plans. I, I do have a plan in the work to make that. And when I do do the much larger hammer, it is my intention to make not only a not only a digital download around it but also a tutorial that, uh, you know, how to put it together. Because some of my other digital downloads, that's been one of the largest gripes with my digital downloads is I didn't, like, give people step-by-step -step instructions on how to assemble it. I just assumed people knew. This thing's connected to that thing, and you twist it. There's and, more than one you know, way and, you can and, assemble and, it. Really. And there's more ways that you can assemble it and using the materials you have on hand. But... Um, it, Again, one of the biggest complaints with any of my designs or drawings I've drawn up on the digital downloads was, you know, oh, there's no instructions. <laughs> it was, I didn't have instructions when I was making it. I'm just giving you an exploded diagram of everything that I have and its sizes and how it relates, you know, to one another. So when I when I do that, I will not only have the regular digital download like that, but there'll be like a an instructional. Uh, thing that people can download as well uh, when when I do the much larger power hammer. And I'll probably do some free build series little snippets online too as well, just on YouTube when I get around to it. English Adventure, thank you for the Smiley Poo sticker. <laughs> <laughs> I can never quite feel how, I, I can never quite guess how people are feeling when they do a Smiley Poo. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they're smiling, but... So cryptic. <laughs> Dan Chromycia says, can you do everything with a fly press that you can do with a hydraulic press, and how do they compare? Um, no. And yes, at the same time. And, uh, I see the Super Chats, by the way. Thank you, Jean, Jean, Jean. Francois. Mm -hmm. Jean Francois, thank you. Um, the a hydraulic press is different from a fly press in a couple different ways. So yes, they both have press in the title, and yes, they do press. But you get a kind of a kinetic energy or a little bit of a thump to it 
when you're using the fly press because when you're using those weights, um, those counter, those fly weights on the top, if you wing it and you get it really whipping, yeah, it's going to come down and hit. Um, it's going to hit with a certain amount of force and it's actually going to give it a bit of kinetic energy, almost like my hands here, and then push. So it's going to kind of hit and then squeeze a, a little bit as it goes. Um, the other thing is, is that fly presses, when you're talking about their tonnage, and this is from the information I've gathered so far, again, I'm still new at this, fly presses, the tonnage, that's their capacity. That's how much you can push them to. It's about six tons of pressure as the one behind me. It's not that it puts out six tons of pressure. It's just that you can crank on it and apply six tons of pressure underneath it versus a hydraulic press. It, it's a, you have 37 tons, you have 37 tons. You set a pressure and it's 37 tons of pressure and you just put things in there and it squishes it down, um, you know, until you hit whatever your uh, spool valve limit is where it kicks over and starts dumping that pressure off the top. So a hydraulic press is more of a static pressure type deal where with the fly press it's going to be variable. How hard you flick the swing the swing arm and and or when it's actually squeezing how much you pull on it and how much the piece is resisting. So that's going to be more variable in that result. With that being said, a hydraulic press a hydraulic press is great at squishing big, heavy, thick material. It can put out tonnage. You can get 50 tons, 100 tons of force in a relatively small area. Um, and you don't need a gigantic press in order to be able to push stuff out like that. With a fly press, if it was a 100-ton fly press, the thing would be massive. It would be huge, huge. You'd be lucky if you could get anywhere close to the center of it to do the work. Uh, where a fly press is real handy is if you have closed die work that you want to do, if you've got punching work, you have repeated work that you want to do, and you are okay with a slower acting tool with no sound. That's the great thing about this thing. Mm -hmm. It's quiet, 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 quiet. As where with a hydraulic press, you're going to have that whiny, you know, running of that motor no matter what you do, whether you have a power pack unit running in a little closet back in your room somewhere, or if it's going to be right at the press, you're going to hear the hydraulic pumps and motors running, um, you know, for a hydraulic press. So uh, they, are this, they are the same, essentially. They can both squeeze stuff, but they operate on two different kind of principles, really. So, and Tyler Warren, I'm glad you're a big fan of the videos. Glad to have you in the chat. John Elliott, thank you for the $10 super sticker. You guys are all about the super stickers today. Hey, thank you all for the super <laughs> stickers. Those are awesome. So. And DK Ironworks with the $2 super chat says, love the work you both do with the community. Thank you, DK. Greatly appreciate that. Glad, glad to be here. So, um, Now, I, I would like to go back on the fly press. So people will ask, and, and I had these questions to myself. I was leery about getting a fly press in the shop. I've used hydraulic press. I got one that I need to remake um, over off the side here. You guys can't see it. I don't show it in any of the videos, but it moved up here with me all the way from Ohio. Uh, and that was a 37 ton press. Um, so, you know, I'm used to be able to squeeze pretty large blocks of steel pretty easily, right? It had some critical flaws. One of the main critical flaws that it had is because the way I built it is it couldn't press anything straight. It always squeeze things at diamonds or diagonals. I could never get it to press straight. Um, tried all sorts of stuff, didn't work out. Uh, but, you know, where the fly press, it, it, it squeezes dead on straight. It has no play in any of the gibs or anything like that. So it, it's a really a, a great tool. But I was leery about getting a fly press, if you all indulge me and let me go on this bunny trail for a second. Um, I was leery about getting the fly press because any video I've ever seen of somebody using a fly press, it looks like they're jerking their shoulders out of socket to use it, right? And for me, I already have shoulder issues um, from, well, years of doing bad things to my body. So I already have shoulder problems. So I can't, you know, I couldn't stomach, you know, yanking on it or whatever. We had one come up for available up here. 
it was priced really well for the size, and I'm like, well, I'm going to try it. You know, the worst case scenario, they sell like hotcakes. People want fly presses. Everybody's out there looking for them. So I could turn around and resell it if I really, really, really didn't like it. And I'm sure glad I bought it. it it's, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of the fly press now. Uh, in fact, I was telling Jessica the other day I wouldn't mind having a 60-tonner, which I've been looking at one and I was drooling over it, but those cracks need to get filled in the barn first <laughs> before, before I go about trying to purchase any, any other bigger pieces of tools and equipment. Um, just, I'm a big fan of quiet. Like in my shop, I have a tiny electric blower usually that runs on my, on my coal forge, so you hear some crackling of the fire. That's about it um, in the old coal forge there. I don't like the gas forge as much just because it's loud. Uh, the gas forge I have is loud. So, you know, I usually stay with my Coke forge and uh, burn that. And then the power hammer, again, it's loud. It rattles the shop. You know, it, it, it's a loud machine. But this fly press, I can be in here at 1 a.m. and you could be slip, sleeping outside. You'd never know I was in the shop. Not at all. Hell, you could be sleeping in the other room and wouldn't even know I was in here uh, forging anything. So if you're in a small neighborhood and, you know, you're worried about noise complaints, things like that, but you still want to get a tool that can do some damage on some thicker material, a fly press can be a really great way to go, a really great option. Davis Firedbeard has a question for you about fly presses. He says, Roy, do you know what the weight of the fly press is, even though... Sorry, I'll pull it back up. It jumped a second there. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for the super chats, by the way, if I've missed any while I was on my little jaunt, my, my little Roy rant. Okay. Do you know what the weight of the fly press is? Even a rough guess would be handy, trying to figure out what I need to lift one when I can mm -hmm. finally get one. So, so the guy I bought it from, um, Jacob Moss, a demon blacksmith, you guys should check him out on Instagram. He does some neat work. He said it weighed right around 750 pounds or so. That, that was according to his estimates. And I've seen some other materials online, not this specific fly press, but other fly presses that are similar in size that weigh about that much. So, so that fly press there weighs about 750 pounds. Um, so it's not light. It's, it's not lightweight. They, they have a lot more weight in them than you know, you might think, because they build them pretty, pretty thick castings. But, uh, yeah, no, they're, they're, they're pretty good. And to kind of parrot what, uh, uh, what Frank Strock was saying, he was saying that fly presses are, bent for, are built for bending and squeezing things, not really forging things. And, and that's true, um, but it does work fairly well for forging. Now, again, controlled operations and repeatable motions. Would I be using this thing to draw down big billets of material? Not unless I had to, right? But I have other means in my shop to draw down heavier stock. I, I wouldn't go to the fly press for that. But where the fly press would be real handy is, you know, uh, I used it on that hammer billet we were working on on Friday nights. I used it to kind of help square everything back up, squeeze it underneath the fly press, and it was able to squeeze it enough that it popped scale from the sides. So, you know, it's able to put down some pressure on things. Um, if you're going to draw out heavier or bigger bar stock, like in my videos that I was doing around it, like I was taking bites on one inch steel, and it was squishing it down by half in one bite. But you got to take small bites. You just can't just load it up with a, a big chunk, like as if you can, like what you can do on a hydraulic press. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but very right. It, they were meant for bending operations and squeezing things, you know, inserting bearings into stuff, bronze bushings into holes and things like that. It's really what fly presses were designed for originally. Just going to get better. Thank you for the $2 super chat. Says my bit for shipping. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Just going to get better. Greatly appreciate it. And uh, Tyler Warren has a question. Go on. How many projects have you used the fly press for so far? I saw the candle holders you did recently. 
His question is, say how many projects have you used the fly press for? You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> Videos so, are coming um, to you soon. So right now, the only real project I've done under the fly press was the candle holder thing. And I just did that because I feared people were getting bored of watching me make tooling for the fly press and not actually mm -hmm. squeeze anything of value mm -hmm. <laughs> out uh, from underneath it. There will, be some, there will be some videos, some project videos, where I won't necessarily be using it specifically just to show off what the fly press can do, but it'll be used in the video, so to speak, um, you know, just to help speed things along. I've got one coming up here soon that is actually forging bowls, and I made a new die. Hopefully this won't turn all about just fly presses. I made a bowling die for the fly press to push bowls down into it. And buddy, let me tell you, that works. <laughs> Super quick. Super quick. Mm -hmm. Anything that needs to be dished. Um, yep. Ladles. Dishing, bending. My my most use for it will my use case the most for it will be probably slitting and drifting holes. That's kind of my main purpose of what I wanted it for in the shop. Slitting and drifting holes and doing like chasing work, different type of you know chased details on stuff because it's a nice controlled motion and uh, it'll work really well for like scrolls and um, you know fluted type stuff for scrolls and the baroque work that I get into so so that was that was my main thing but I'm making all the other obligatory things first um, and I'll probably use it for cold bending things and stuff like that Brian Legrand says Roy Brian from mm -hmm. Old Coal Forge here you had planned to upgrade your cement flooring what is the future of your floor planning with the cost of materials being what they are nowadays? So the future of the floor planning is kind of on hold right now at the moment. I have literally so much stuff on my palette right now of things to do. It's, it's beyond absurd. In fact, it, it's kind of like it's at that point, it's at that critical mass where I start kind of like backing off. On, on doing much else. Um, so projects around, uh, par projects around the shop, the big one that I want to do is get all the light, uh, getting all of this sealed up before winter. That's, that's the main goal this year. If I can get this sealed up before winter, that'll be really good. We got our gravel in, we got the gravel done, we got a gravel lane put in. Um, you know, that was 300 foot long gravel lane, got that all installed. Um, this year, that was a big process. That was a week long project, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. To do that, a lot yeah. of excavating, a lot of things like that. Got that done. There's gravel in the shop. Uh, so for our shop floor, the concrete shop floor over in the other side of the barn, it is what it is. It's old concrete. Yeah, it it needs some there. help. It needs some help. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but that that will come that will come over time and the main reason for that too as well is everything that's i've piled into that shop will have to come out of that shop in order to do the concrete work in there mm -hmm. so well, probably you're wanting to i'll be shut down for doing. probably a month uh, you know at least when, when i do mm -hmm. that so um but yeah so there's that's all in the works when i get to it i don't know it might be Four years, it might be two years, it might be six months. I might have a wild hair moment next week, but mm -hmm. most likely not anytime soon for the concrete. Uh, but you know, I've got I've got lights in the shop right now. My main thing is I need to get the light holes plugged up on the on the siding that you see, and then the roof. I've got to tackle the roof, which that'll be the next thing. So because believe it or not, it does leak in here. So. It's an old barn roof, and it needs some love and care and some sealing and painting and things like that. And I'm chicken. Let's just be honest. I'm chicken. It's up there. <laughs> Gordon Farmer, thank you for the super sticker, the smiley poo. Thank you, Gordon. And uh, Jeff Glenn, to answer your question about where to sell items, um, mm -hmm. you can sell them locally, craft shows, things like that. You can sell them online. Somebody had already answered Etsy. Um, if you want to learn how to do Etsy, we have a playlist on our channel that goes over how to make a mm -hmm. listing, how to start your store, all that stuff. Um, you can do eBay. It's less preferable. Roy actually mm -hmm. sold his 
first couple of items online on eBay. So you can, but that's not as nice of a crowd over there. So yeah, yeah, you, e eBay is a little bit more difficult. It was when we were doing it. Uh, we ended up getting out of it. They, they have a real problem with not protecting their sellers as much eBay does versus mm -hmm. Etsy. Etsy, there's a dialogue that has to get started between a between a seller and a buyer. There has to be a dialogue, and they'll actually intermediate that dialogue um, if it gets kind of pushed up that far. They try to get you to take care of it between you know for you to work it out with all interested parties first, and then if it's got to get elevated to a support staff team member, they will right when it comes to Etsy, eBay. They're just like, oh, buyer said this was wrong. Well, seller must instantly be in the wrong, and you spend a lot of time trying to prove that you're not in the wrong at all. So, um, so it, it becomes a real pain in the butt when you're selling on eBay certain items, and I would say custom work or hand forged items. Now, there are some people who do, and, and they do well, and I don't know how they've gotten around it. Maybe they just put up with it. Um, we we didn't back in the day, and who knows? It might have gotten better since when we were doing eBay itself. So. See, um, I had a question for me, I think. Oh, sure. Tim O'Connor says, Etsy is amazing for anything handmade. Yeah, we highly mm -hmm. recommend it. Yep. Um, Glenn, Jeff Glenn, glad that was helpful. Mm -hmm. Brian Nicholson, the Etsy videos were very helpful. I'm glad you thought so. Awesome. And Gary Brown says, have you ever tried Amazon's handmade section? I thought about it, but I am way behind on items. Oh, we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, we, we did that for a while. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of custom work here well basically no custom work beginning of this year uh so just trying to catch up on everything and so uh we hadn't been doing a whole lot on amazon handmade because a lot of my items we did for a while we, we did, did for, for about a, a year for, i think for about a year we had for a year we were doing well i think we had above ten thousand dollars in sales on it and then the yep. year after that it just dropped severely without like we didn't do anything different and then yeah. after then the third year in, that's when you like yeah. really cut back on your custom. Well, 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 the second year, I know why it dropped significantly. The reason why it dropped significantly the second year is because they have a time limit. They have like a 30 day time limit. And a lot of the work that I put out are two months, three months wait time. So, um, and that just doesn't work well with a, a site. So if you don't get the job done in that 30 day window, they just give the customer the money back. So uh, you could be right in the middle of a job. We had that happen to us twice. And then I'm like, okay, we're not putting anything on there, which was some of my more popular items. We took those off of the, of the website because I had a longer turnaround time on them. And so, and then that's where it plummeted. And then I kind of just, we kind of left it, didn't get any sales for a while. We had a couple... I had a couple people who kind of bait and switched to act like they were interested in something, got us to write a whole bunch of emails and quotes and whatnots, and then just drop off the face of the map. And I was like, all right, that's it. <laughs> you know, we're done with it. Um, but as if you can do small items on Amazon Handmade, I it would be really good. But they have to be in quick turnaround type items. You It can't get into real custom work that takes months and months on end, so... Etsy would be a better medium for that. No. Yeah. Or your own website. Yes. No, I'm not going to offer you some sponsorship ad for, you know, it's Wix no. or say, it's not wherever. Or, if you do want wait, to, which one do we use? We use Weebly. It's Weebly. We, we do. I, I did some videos. <laughs> Hashtag not a sponsor or get any affiliate money. So if you go no. set up a thing. Oh, well, actually, well, if you do go watch my Weebly videos, <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, uh, what is it? We're really terrible shills. <laughs> It's been a little while since I did those videos. If you want to build your own website, Weebly yep. is what we use. You can set up your own for free. Um, so, like, if you do the paid tiers, that's like if you're going to do uh, online store and stuff like that. But anyway, <laughs> sorry. Side note there. Oh. Uh, Janet McComb, the rustic blacksmith, how much inventory should you have before placing an item on Etsy? Inventory of one. So... Um, the way I like to recommend anybody get into doing this full time, if you're going to get into this full time and you're serious about it, you need to do something that the military calls fire and forget. You need to post 
whatever it is that you've made, you need to keep it active as a listing, but you need to forget about it. Cut your little heartstrings to it and say, well, I'm not going to make anything until this thing sells. Wrong attitude. Post whatever it is that you made. Make sure it's a constant active listing. That means you need to keep relisting it, making sure that it stays at the top of the search engines, and you need to make other things. Say, oh, great, okay, that one's done. Go on to making other things. If you want to make 10 of those, you can. That's, it's, a, it's a rough bet. If you make 10 of something and they don't sell well, you're going to have 10 of them for a long time. It might be two years before you sell out of them all. And be like, man, I wasted a lot of stock in that. So make enough of one. If it's going to be a one-of-a-kind item, list it as a one-of-a-kind item. Leave it at that. If it's going to be a production run item that you want to do at a later date, just make one of them so you have a photograph of that item for a listing. Here's what it is. It's a finished thing. It's a steak flipper. I can make you one in whatever color or length you want, blah, blah, blah. Post it online. Make sure it stays relevant and just continue to make items. Next thing, it's not a steak flipper. It's a squirrel cooker. And the next thing, it's a, you know, letter opener. And the next thing, it's a Damascus hairpin. And then the next thing, whatever tickles your fancy, just start posting. You get it up there. You start getting your site full of items. You, you know, it, get your store full. The other mistake with people is trying to start online with your online businesses, uh, like when you do Etsy, a lot of people say, well, Etsy doesn't work. Yeah, it does. Yes, it does. They're coming from somebody who spent the majority of their blacksmithing career on Etsy. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yes, it does. The big mistake that most people make is you say, hey, I want to sell that cup. Okay, I posted it. And you walk away for six months and wonder why you never got any sales. When you post that cup, boom. That thing's up there, maximum 24 hours. And then you have to relist. Because if you don't relist, this little cup just moves over every hour on the hour to the bottom of the search engine until it's no longer seen. And it's buried in 500 million other items. So that you post it again. Oh, it's back there. Etsy says, hey, don't you want this nice cup? And it keeps slowly going back and away. So you have got to keep things active with your account so you post more items and you keep renewing listings as they call it i forget what it is how much their fee is it's 40, it's 40 cents a listing we what we did is we yep. did we had over 400 active uh no over 100 active listings and we would renew 20 a day so that was like four dollars a day yep. and so we just kind of calculated that in as our budget and, and that's your advertising cost i mean mm -hmm. it's a cost business is going to cost you something it's going to cost you time headache sweat tears, late nights, early mornings. It's going to cost you that, and it's going to cost you advertising dollars. You just have to. The big benefit of Etsy, uh, this is my, I'm going on a rant right now about selling on Etsy. Uh, we can get back on track on other things, but the big thing that Etsy has that your personal website doesn't is buying capital. It can buy ad spots on the front page of Google. You can't. You can't compete with Etsy. They've got a million dollar budget for ad space. Million plus. It's several million now. Okay. But when we first got on Etsy as this platform, they had a million dollar budget for ad spend. So that means they would spend a million bucks to make sure that their items, when you searched bespoke ironwork, that bling, Etsy, the website, would come up in Google search results. Hey, we're over here. We got those things. We got people who got those things, right? Because Etsy's in the business of making money. So if you help Etsy make that money, they help you make that money, and they put your items at first, first and forefront of the list. And when we did, when I was doing a lot of copper work, and I do mean a lot, a lot, thousands of bowls and copper vessels, when I was doing that type work, we were on the not only the front page of Etsy, we were in the front, we were the first category, we were the head of the category. Like when you click on a listing of like copper work, our work was the first thing that you would come to. We don't do that now, we pulled way back on those strings because I got tired of doing copper work. But 
well, I, I shouldn't say that. I'm doing copper work right now. I, I got tired of doing those, you know, uh, a certain type of copper work and doing so much. So we pulled back the strings ourselves, but Etsy kept us. If you typed in copper bowl, we were the first on Google search engines. If you typed in because Etsy was promoting us because they were making coin from us. So you pay Etsy, they find ways of getting you paid. So that, and, and that's how it works. You can't, it's not a classified listing. You don't say, well, job's done. I posted an item. Take care of it. You can't do that. You have to actively get Etsy to see that, hey, he's paying 40 cents a day trying to get this thing, you know, or 40 cents a week trying to get this thing at the top of our search engines. You know, we're, we're going to try to find people who want to buy that buy that item so wow. about etsy oh you can set the quantity so if you say just lost a minute okay. hopefully we're back we're good we're back yeah yeah so if you only you know you can set you can set the quantity to 10 or whatever you want or you can set it smaller if you want and just increase it uh, after you've sold a couple so you can control how much you sell in that way yeah yeah so so if you're afraid somebody's going to buy 500 of thing you got a good problem if they do <laughs> it's worth that amount of insanity you know, maybe once. Um, there are a lot of items that you do like that and you're like, whoa, uh, man, oh, wow, oh, man, you stumbled upon something that you didn't think. It could be something so stupid simple that you made once and you only intended on making it once. Oh, we have so many stories of that. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, 10 sell and 15 and then like 35 and you're like, whoa, wait a second, I didn't sign up for this. Right. Roy got to the point, he's like, don't make this a custom listing, because <laughs> yep. otherwise I'd get to take a photo of or whatever he made, and mm -hmm. yeah, just make it a new listing. Yeah. Which, I mean, yep. we've got a lot of listings up that way. But... Which, and, and that's a good problem to have as an artist and as a business person, if, if you want to do that. Um, probably, to be honest, eight times out of ten, that's not going to be your story. So 80% of the time, you're going to post an item, and you're going to be like, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with me? Why isn't it selling? The universe is against me. And, and, and that's if you have any sort of artist in you or artisan, that's what it's going to feel like uh, about 80% of the time. It's going to sell over time. It will. It'll sell. We've got listings on there. Heck, we sold a listing the other day that I had in my shop. I've had it in our house, actually, just sitting on our shelf for like three two, years. three years time. Let's do, yeah. Yeah. Actually an item you made a video once. Yeah, it sat up there for three years mm -hmm. and it just sold. Mm -hmm. That was an extra 150 bucks in my pocket this week. So, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. uh, eventually things will sell. Um, and that's why it's important to constantly have a roll of items going into your shop and coming, it, it, refreshing your stock, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, You know, if you constantly are trying new things, you're widening and widening that net to pull people in to you that might possibly want to work with you and you never know what it might be i had i mean i've had people come in on a horseshoe nail hook that they were going to buy and end up buying like and that's like a three dollar item and end up spending seven hundred dollars with us completely unrelated but it was this little stupid hook that they clicked on first and then they say hey you know what I think I want a whole campfire set from this guy, and I want this, and I want that, and and and, and that happens too as well, you know. So, um, so it's worth constantly posting those items out there. Uh, to answer your question, a baguette with a computer says, "What sells well on Etsy?" I actually made a ebook for this, <laughs> and it's called um, the Blacksmith Cheat Sheet. It's got 50 items in it, and it's from anywhere from beginner to intermediate skill level with like you can have a small mm -hmm. shop and you can have minimal tools and you can make most of these 50 items. So like I write a description of it and I also have the tags and the keywords and mm -hmm. the proposed pricing range for it as well. Um, so if you're really interested in selling, go check out my ebook. It's over at our website, www.blacksmithpdfs.com. The link will be down in the video description, uh, but that, that'll help you. I mean, you can use that no matter what platform you're selling on, but you know, definitely, um, the keywords will be super handy on Etsy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I do have one other ebook that I wrote, I believe last year, and it's um, Photography for the Blacksmith. And that's 
you know, having the keywords is one part of it, but having mm -hmm. a good presentation of your item is another, especially when they're online and they don't get to see yep. the, the item in person other than the photographs you yep. posted. Which is, which is interesting because the blacksmith cheat sheet, like the best, almost the best selling mm -hmm. digital download we've ever done, and literally the photography thing for blacksmiths, <laughs> The worst selling yeah. ebook period that, that's ever happened. Like, like, oh my God, presentations, everything. And so you get this one thing, oh, I'm going to sell my stuff. And it's laying on your swanky shag rug with God knows what stuck in the carpet right next to it. And you're like, here, here's a dinner utensil. You know, you're like, oh, I don't think I'm going to buy that. Right. And, and Jessica makes an ebook specifically for that. And then like nobody buys it. Everyone's like, we're done with you folks. We don't need to buy nothing else. You dirty shills. That's what they're thinking. I know. Uh, that photography takes a little bit of effort. <laughs> Yamez says that yeah. photography book is a huge help. I'm glad you think so, Yamez. Yep. Tim O'Connor, full blank. I'm picking them up. Somebody else asked me a question. Let's get to some people's questions. Sure. Too. If you guys didn't get a, if you guys haven't gotten your question answered yet, just keep kind of asking don't be super repetitive but give it a few and then ask again if if we haven't done anything and you can do at Christ Center Ironworks it helps highlight the, um, the the question specifically beyond side chat that's going on so and Isla Mel Forge thank you for the dollar 49 a moustache that's actually getting really good my moustache is coming in nicely you can't see it because the light angle because I have very light facial hair. But <laughs> trust me, it is there. It is. I shall wax it someday. <laughs> Rob, how do we need to make just a New York Times bestseller? That would be awesome. That would be great. I, I, don't, I don't think there's enough blacksmiths to do that. Right, well, there is. If we had 74,000 sales on yeah, but I think, I don't know how many an products. Amazon product. You have to have over a million. To be like I a don't think so. Uh, I could be wrong. Have you looked at some of them? Uh, most of them Nut are like bags. 54 million copies sold, like when they have that title on there. So I don't yeah. know, it's a bunch, but... Yeah, the value of their content sucks, though, <laughs> let's just be honest. <laughs> a lot of those. <laughs> you, you would beat them. I'm partial, though. Oh, thank so. you. I I, I'm, I'm partial. <laughs> let's see here, you're looking for a question. Eric said, um, had to leave for a second, how often would you recommend refreshing your listing on a given product on Etsy? Probably two to three times a week for any specific one. Tyler Warren asks, what you have the most fun mm -hmm. making? Uh, what I want. <laughs> I have most fun making the things that I want. Whatever. Um, Whatever fun so, so it's an interesting thing. So I could bring up this. This would be a great kind of kind of Roy rant, if you will. Um, it, it could could be blacksmithing. For me, so for most, I'm assuming for most of you out there, blacksmithing is a hobby, and that's great. So when you make things, you make things pure, purely for the pure enjoyment of making things, right? Because it's it's what you do to relieve stress. It's what you do to take and you know feel creative or, or to have fulfillment or just work with your hands zone out for a bit, like what, whatever your thing is, it, it's, it's something you do to take and have fun. When you do it for a profession, that slightly changes a little bit because although the forging, I enjoy forging things. I enjoy creating stuff. I enjoy that process. Not so much the individual item anymore. So I'm happy when I can get a good, clean day in the shop of just work. Good, honest, hard work. I, I love that, right? If I'm squishing things under the fly press, I don't even have to be making anything. I could just be making scrap. That's it. And I'm happy. I, I, I'm happy at that. I'm fully contented with that. So making items or things, I don't find as much value in as as far as favorites would go because i've made so much stuff right i've made so much individual things in my time smithing 
Some might find that hard to believe. They're like, oh, Roy, you're still a young whippersnapper. Yeah, well, in my decade plus as a blacksmith here, I have made thousands upon thousands of individual items, right, things. Some of those are everything from small stuff that I made hundreds at a time all the way up to larger things that I've made a thousand of or I've maybe only made a couple hundred of like really big things, right? And I've made everything from large stuff to small stuff. I've done some architectural work. I've done, I've done even some micro stuff, right? Little tiny stuff and, and, and jeweler stuff and made wedding rings and I've made necklaces and bracelets and like, like you name it, I've just about made it. And yes, even way, way early on, I made some kniffs. They weren't great. They were when I was first beginning because that's what you do as a beginner. Find out how to beat something out flat and pointy and preferably straight, right? You so, scroll way, 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 way back on our Facebook page. You will see it. Yeah. Way yeah. back, though. So, a but yeah, back. yeah, it I made, made hooks. Oh, my gosh. So many hooks. So many hooks. I was making 400 hooks a month at one point. 400. That's that's a lot of hooks, right? Like, I mean, it's just a lot of hooks. So, so I don't necessarily enjoy an individual item as much as I enjoy the process. Because a lot of times what the business side of things cuts into is there is, t you have a ton of time and only this, this much pay. So you have got to squeeze a ton of like, like a ton of effort and if anything goes wrong that pay just diminished and if anything else goes wrong that pay completely diminishes and if anything else goes wrong that pay disappears completely you're and you're paying to do the job now mm -hmm. and so that adds a level of you know importance urgency um, sometimes mental difficulty if you will stress to a to a particular project in the way that it's constructed and the way that you get it accomplished and done as opposed to if you're cracking a beer on a wednesday evening at 6 p.m you just got off work and you decide you throw some throw some steel in the fire and forge you out a spork or something right that's a big big difference than if that spork had to be a specific dimension it had to be a specific style and it had to be done like last Tuesday. So it, it's a big, it, there's a big difference there. So that's a long story around the gate, but I get asked that all the time, uh, you know, because people figure, well, you're forging all the time in the shop. Not really. About 20% of my days as a business, as a business owner of doing Christ Center Ironworks here, about 20% of my day is spent forging. The rest is spent in everything else. So, you know, it's it really is. I get that's about a week, maybe you know, a week. I probably spent about twenty percent of my time actually forging. So I'm very efficient at that, but the majority of my work has such high finish work to it. it I'm going to spend a lot more time doing the finish work, uh, and yeah, and then all the other clerical stuff like replying to emails and commenting and. Phone calls. Phone calls I mean, I help and with some of that. But. Drafting stuff and drawing things up and making quotes and mm -hmm. sending pictures and, you know, packaging, crating, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, a good portion of my life is spent in that. So I'm happy. My favorite thing to make is just make. Yeah. Long story short, it's just to make. And if I have a preference, French Baroque ironwork. Mm -hmm. I think I'd buy a Christ Center Ironworks spork. <laughs> <laughs> better watch out. <laughs> Rob, you better watch out. Class. It'll be expensive. <laughs> or you just teach a class where people make their own sporks. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to make your own, Rob. <laughs> In fact, a lot of stuff that I do now, like when I teach, that, that's a good portion of what I do, so I really enjoy that. I enjoy forging mines more now than just forging items. And... Like when I teach a lot of my stuff that I make, if I demonstrate things or whatever, I don't even keep, I just give it away. So I just like, oh, here, you can have it. You know, or I find whoever was paying the most attention and they can have the thing that I make. Because once I've, once I've created it, once it's out of here and it's out here in the real world and it's, 
and signed, sealed, delivered, and done, my brain shuts off to it. My emotions are no longer there. I'm not no longer connected to that piece anymore. Um, and out the door it goes. Yama says, so Roy, if I gave you a million dollars, would you and the family join me on a blacksmithing world tour visiting everyone? A million dollars? A million dollars. <laughs> hmm. In the winter, in the Northern Hemisphere. Yes. <laughs> Or it could be in the summer, but in the northern hemisphere. And in the winter, in the southern hemisphere. We could do that. As long as we arranged it right. Gordon Farmer says, another tip. Don't let people mess and screw with your head like they have done with me. That's why the hammer is being laid down for the last time soon for me. Hmm. Well, Gordon, I don't think you need to do that, pal. I mean, if you got to take a break, if you got to take a break from it, go ahead and take a break from it for a little bit. Um, I... I like to cautious people against because I'm very much, uh, for those of you who don't know me or maybe people don't know me all that well, I don't really share a whole lot about myself personally as far as the way that I, the way that I look at stuff and, and do things beyond blacksmithing. But me, as far as a person, I'm an all on or all off type person usually. And so, so if I like you, I like you. If I dislike you, you'll know, and I don't like you. Like I have no problem telling. A thousand people that I dislike you or my disdain for you um, just because I can cut those emotions right there or I can really like you and I can go bend well over way over backwards you know to a fault uh, I'm with you so because I'm all on or all off think of it like a light switch and I've had to as I've gotten older I've had to really work at not that there are gray areas out there and to not constantly be on or off. And that's very difficult for me to do. And so making, making statements like this will be my last time I'll ever lift a hammer. Those type state, those type statements will obligate you sometimes even more than what you, than, than, than what maybe you anticipated. Right? So you might say, Hey, this is the last time I will ever, be at one of your live streams and then next week you show up at one of our live streams right it that certainty kind of thing we don't know what our future holds so if you've got to take a moment you know and you say hey you know what i'm just getting too bombarded by things and i need to kind of get away into you know a bit of a quiet place and kind of reassess some stuff that's okay that's honest but be careful be careful of you know, going down that path where, where you say to yourself that I'm never going to do this again, or, or this will be the last time I ever do this because I've had to eat a ton of crow <laughs> when it comes down to that, haven't I, hun? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even on jobs, on projects, I, I've done that as well. I, I have said, you, you know, I, I have, I have said that about YouTube. Mm-hmm. I've had people come out, and, and if you want to talk about people coming up against you, man, man, have I ever, huh, <laughs> on YouTube. I've had, I've had those moments where I said, you know what, to heck with YouTube, screw all those people, I'm not doing this anymore, throw a temper tantrum, an absolute mm -hmm. fit, and be just dead set on it, like, just to heck with it, and, like, all off of one commenter. Mm. All off of one commenter. Call me everything but a good guy. <laughs> I would have even been fine if you said I was a bad guy. Just nice and easy like. But no. No. I, I had, to, had to insult everything that I take personally about myself or, or everything that I hold dear. And like I could have let that ruin me and have that off switch moment. And guess what? We wouldn't be having this conversation. <laughs> oh, man. There would be no YouTube channel. Because uh, Jessica's been there, huh? Mm -hmm. I, I've gotten okay. so upset sometimes. I'm like, you know what? Nobody likes my stuff. That's fine. I'll delete everything right now. And I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, she's like, she's like, no, Roy, walk I'll away. Think about this. <laughs> it's like, let's Give it a month, a breathe. Least. And, you know, and then mm -hmm. I'll take, and I'll take, I'll take a breather, step back from the situation, I feel less strongly about it after I've slept on it for a few weeks. Sometimes I haven't put out content during that time frame. There's been times where you guys have had a lack in content. Well, that's because Roy was mad at everybody. 
not at everybody, but just specifically the whole thing, right? What it is to do YouTube. And, and I was debating on whether I was going to hit that big gigantic delete button where it asks you. And I know because I've been on that delete button where it asks you, do you really, whoa, do you really want to do this and remove all these videos forever? And I was like, forever, yeah. I'm like, forever. Yeah, I do. So bad I do. But Jessica's like, you just need to wait. <laughs> so, she's, so she's so balanced. Yeah, let's take all the devices away from Roy. Let's give him to do his happy plays, right? You know, one of those sort of things. And yeah, I would have regretted it. I would have regretted it because I get people, like I'm trying to encourage Gordon right now. And I hope I'm encouraging you, Gordon. I, I really am. I get this opportunity to speak across the internet, across the globe, to someone I've never met in person and try to encourage them to keep on going. And I would be missing out on that opportunity right now just off my own pride getting hurt by whatever. You know? So don't let somebody else ruin something for you. They have no power in your life. They have no control in your life in that way. Don't let somebody ruin something that you're happy about. If you're happy to blacksmith, just, be, just do blacksmithing. You need to take a break. Take a break. You know? If, if you need to come back, come back, you know, but be careful of making like the last time ever type statements because I personally have made those statements and then I felt, well, just to be honest, me personally, I felt dumb a week later because I, because I made it, this is an affirmative and no, it wasn't, it, it really wasn't, you know, it was just, it's the way I was feeling in the moment because I need to de-stress a little bit and, and, you know, reassess things. So, so hopefully that will encourage you, Gordon. Went on my little soapbox there, my little yeah. tirade. Um, Somebody said when you're not helps. forging, they get solid Roy Rans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, to bring on the haters. Luckily, live streams. Live streams are so long that people that generally hate me personally as a person don't watch them all. Yeah. That they don't watch them all the way through. So, you so might convert them. That's the thing. yeah. Otherwise, they might get converted. You know, they become a believer. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Holman, eighty percent of YouTube commenters are idiots in need of a hobby. Hopefully, I am in the other twenty percent. <laughs> Sound like you're off on good footing. You are. So, that's that's one of those other things that I've had to get good at. My earlier days of YouTube. I have a lot of shame. I'm not going to lie. I have a lot of shame in my early... I, again, being all on or all off person, I still stand by every word I've said. Because, yep, I said it. If you ask me, Roy, did you say this really ignorant stop comment like 10 years ago? Yep, I sure did. Are you sorry about it? Absolutely not. I meant every word of it when I said it. So you can ask me. You'd be like, oh, Roy, it looked like 20 years ago. You made a bigoted statement. You know, do, do you feel sorry about that? Nope. Not a, not not at all. Nope. Today I would. Yeah, but back then, no. I I'm not gonna apologize for something I said 20 years ago. It just I I, I won't. I stand by <laughs> I stand by the words that I say. They come out of my mouth. Right, wrong, or indifferent, or dumb, or whatever. I I I just stand by them. Just because you can't go back and change them. Once they leave your mouth, they are what they are. Backpedaling doesn't help. Right. All you can do is move forward and do different and, and, and be different. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I say some, I say some dumb stuff and commenters count on me. I've gotten a lot better. I think I've gotten a lot better. Let's mm -hmm. just say that. I think I've gotten a lot better at understanding that sometimes people are just having a rough day mm -hmm. and I'm the guy they want to take it out on online. Yeah. So as long as it's not like super perverse language or like something that you wouldn't, uh, I'd hope you wouldn't say it in front of your mother, your own mother. Um, if you do, you never got the soap treatment in your mouth. Um, if it's something, if it's something like that, those I com those comments I'll just delete because I won't take people bashing. And the other thing that I won't tolerate is bashing other people in the comment section as well. Just people just straight out. Uh, going on a tirade on other people. So, yep. So, uh, we have not given the swedge block away yet. I know a couple of people have asked that. Yeah. 
Well, we want to keep our numbers up because last time we did that, numbers dropped by half. So stay tuned. We could give away a few sticker packs though. Just pick a You gotta stay tuned. <laughs> We want to give away a few sticker Yeah, we could do that, time. or I could also go and get, grab some blanks. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, you could probably do things. Are blanks okay with everybody for me to give away this stream as some door prizes, and then we give away the swedge block? Does that sound good? That'll work. <laughs> Brian Nicholson said, I'm pretty sure that temper is a Daytonian thing. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that what it is? It's a Daytonian thing? So, yeah, well... I don't know. I think it's just in my upbringing. So my, my mom has, love you, mom, if you're watching this. My mom's a hothead, and I got the hothead side of the family genes from her. So it's uh, something I repent for often. Yeah, everybody's game for the blanks. They okay. Blank me. Love the blanks. Blanks are beautiful. Daniel. Okay. <laughs> be careful. I know. Go away. There we go. There you go. All right. I'll be back with some blanks. Jeff's going to keep them entertained. Back. All right. Let's see. Speargrass Forge. No, there's no forging today. We had computer difficulties, a.k.a. I turned on the computer the other day, and I got the blue air screen of death that says, your computer needs, to, needs recovery. And we haven't been able to do anything other than get that blue screen just yet. So we are live streaming from our phone today while the uh, computer is in process of getting fixed. It's that. It'll be taken care of by next live stream, but um, we do have another live stream coming up. It'll be July 2nd for anybody who wants to join us. Make sure you join us then. Also, Roy is gathering up a couple of blanks that we're going to give away. Rob Huff says, I love the blanks out of some blanking blanks. <laughs> yes, um, pick one for Father's Day. That's a good idea. Derek Goodwin. <laughs> So yes, right now we, it looks like we have about 107 uh, viewers joining us. The Heathen Blacksmith Bone live stream is the same way I make content. Yeah, um, we did phone, our first, our first 10 videos we did on Nikon D7000. I helped Roy film those. And then we, talk, we walked away for it from about a year. We're like, we don't think this is going to be everything uh, we thought it was going to be. And we came back after a year and we had I think like 800 subscribers and several thousand views and we're like maybe this is worth a while so um when we resumed there we did everything on on the phone for a year or two all of our videos until we were able to upgrade to our lumex g7 so um yeah so this is kind of an unusual um for us to be doing it on the phone but it allowed us to keep going even with computer issues so We have, oh, let's see. I think Roy's going to be giving away one of our new items. Um, we've recently add, added a few more things to the shop, and we're trying to continue doing so. Oh, yeah, that's, wow, considerably deeper. I wanted to show off the basin I was working on today. Could fit a big baby in there. <laughs> <laughs> How deep is that? It looks super deep. It's 10 inches right now. It's 10 inches, wow. I've got another inch to go. You know, that could be a giant pot of spaghetti, feed an army, like the black color <laughs> army. Yeah. A big burnt pot pie. Yeah, so that's roughly 26 inches in diameter, and it's 10 inches deep right now, so I gotta go a whole nother inch with it. <laughs> and it weighs about colors. 35 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be the black collar army, that's what it is. Got yeah, giant black collar burnt, army, yeah. Giant burnt pot pie. Mm. <laughs> Everybody's getting the phones ready. <laughs> blink the blanketing blank out of it. <laughs> oh. It's like the smirk video. <laughs> really, like, let's go blanks. All right, people are excited. So, um, how thick was that when I started? It's it's eighth inch thick plate. So it's eighth inch thick, and 28 inches in diameter when I started with it. So, I'm hoping it's actually coming up a little short, so I need to drive a bit more material into the bottom than what I was wanting to do. I, I should have probably made it 29 or 30 inches. Probably 30 inches is, yeah. I should have made it 30 inches around in diameter and then sunk it and it would have came up to a much better, um, well not better, it just, it would have gave me more material to work with, so to speak, to turn that up. 
um, and have the perfect um, perfect amount of material once the bowl is done. No, the bowl's not in the giveaway. <laughs> oh, that right there, it may not look at it, it may not look like it, but that's about four hundred dollars in material currently mm -hmm. at today's prices. So that there, you don't want to screw it up. Oh, I'm hoping not to screw it up. That'll be terrible. I've done it before. I've blown through the bottom um, mm -hmm. by just thinning the bottom too much. So when you can um, do like the little stitches, yeah. you know, make it artsy. Yeah. So I'll answer some more questions about the baptismal uh, thing, that big bowl. When I get there, I know people have some questions about sinking, raising, some of that stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, but let, let's go ahead and give away some things, huh? And black collar. Ten dollars super chat says twenty eight more days left. <laughs> twenty eight more days left. That's right. So got the old hand hammer here. Hey, yeah, you guys can see this up close now, huh? Oh yeah. Got my little design on the side in 420p quality or whatever the phone's doing at right now. Uh, you guys get the anvil ring up front. So so I've got a couple blanks I'm going to just give away. We're going to do some hooks just because they're a great little project. Anybody can hang up some stuff. I figure that's pretty easy for most people in the stream to do. So we're going to give away some tree hooks. These are nice little cabin hooks. If you want to do them in Christmas time, you can punch in all sorts of ornaments. I've got all sorts of tutorials on these that you can do, or you can just texture them with a cross pin and make them a cabin hook, which is kind of my suggestion if you're going to make them to sell and stuff. That way they're not seasonal. Uh, so we're going to give away three of those. Right. We're going to give away a pack of three, if you will, of those to a lucky winner. And then we're going to give away some heart hooks, and we're going to give two packs of three away of those. So those are our heart hook blanks. These, I've done a video on these, of course. And my favorite way of doing this is for like Valentine's type stuff or anniversary deals. Type in the first, you know, you punch in the letter, the first initial of each person's name. Like for us, R and J, Roy and Jess, right? We would, I, I would punch in an R and a J. And then where I drill the hole at, I put in a Phillips head screw and orient it to where the plus marks there and then it makes it you know roy plus j right mm -hmm. r plus j right yep. works out pretty good right so so that so that works out pretty good um that was kind of like a as bob ross would say a happy little accident mm -hmm. <laughs> a happy little tree so yeah so we'll be giving away two packs of those and then we have a new item on the website i didn't cut a whole bunch of these so these are just like call this a I wouldn't even say a pre-order, but uh, we didn't cut we didn't cut a whole bunch of these just because we didn't know how they do. And I haven't made video on it yet, but I have made some anvil hooks. Can they see that all right? So I've made some anvil hook blanks that you know you can hang up in your shop and stuff like that. Decorate them however you want. Stamp your logo or insignia in them. And so I'm going to give away one each to three lucky winners. Mm -hmm. So all right. All right. You got that written down? Yeah, one each that. of those, right? Of the anvil hooks? Oh, one each. Yep, we're going to give away one each. Okay. That way people can try them out and use them. Uh, these are a new item on the website. So these are up there for sale, are they not, Jess? They are. Mm -hmm. So these are a new item up on our website, blacksmithpds.com. Uh, if you want to go check those out, that's my little shield presentation for you. But we're going to give that away. And then, obviously, the Holland Anvil Swedge Block that you all clicked on when you clicked into the stream. The thumbnail, anyhow, that was there. I've got it back there, but I'm not going to lift it. You guys can... It's... It's near... Here. Might as well. I'm here. You're here. We're all here. There you go. Just leave it there for now. Is that looking? Yeah, we can see it. Voila. If Thomas was here, you know, he could be doing that part. Yeah, where's Thomas when we need him? The guy's got a day job and stuff. What's going on with that? <laughs> so, yeah. So, then... After we give away these, it may in a few minutes after that, we'll give away the swedge block. How's that sound? Sounds good. That'll work. All right. You're a whole lot of blanks, huh? They are. We like this chat. Thank you. Thank you. So, I know some people hate the spamming of the chat, but YouTube loves it. So please, spam away. And then stop spamming once the giveaways are over, okay? <laughs> There's a little bit of a lag, but we understand. 
All right, so we're going to ring the anvil. The first thing we're going to give away is the pack of three. Okay. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Correct. Pack of three tree hooks. Yep. We're going to give those away. So once I stop, Jessica's going to scroll and at random pick one lucky person. Who do we have? We have Dean F12 with blank, blank, blank. Dean F12, right? That is correct. Dean F12. Congratulations, you are the winner of this three pack of cabin hooks or tree hook blanks, okay? Dean F12. Make sure you claim your prize through the contact in the description. Do we have a contact link? That's correct, yeah, I do. We do, okay. Yeah. A contact link down in the description. You have got to claim your prize mm -hmm. soon. Don't wait four months because mm -hmm. it won't be here for you. So, okay, <laughs> claim it soon. So. All right, now we're gonna give away our next, our next a three pack of these heart hook planks. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yeah. Set? Go. Who do we got? We landed on Debaca Maker with congrats, Dean F12. <laughs> <laughs> Debaca Maker, congratulations. You won three heart hook blanks, brother. Oh, Debaca Maker, you know what to do. Get with us through the contact link in the description. Jessica pulled your name there, sir. You don't even have to spam to win. <laughs> yeah, see, you don't even have to spam to win. So, all right, let's give away another pack of three. All right. Ready? We'll give away another pack of three blanks. Ready, set, let's go. Who do we got? Landed on Bryce Simmons with salmon eggs. Bryce Simmons, if you're here, paying attention. Bryce Simmons, congratulations. You're the next winner of the three blank heart hook set. Who do we have? Did they get? Are, are they paying attention? I think so. They're... Are you saying woohoo, I won? <laughs> Anybody paying attention to that? I don't know. The comments are going too fast to look for somebody specifically. All right. Shall, shall, shall we slow down and give the anvil hooks uh, away later, okay. or should we do it now? Let everybody, get all their, let everybody get all their let everybody get all their spamming out of the way, huh? Yeah, yeah, we can get all the spamming out of the way. All right. Anvil hook. I think a lot of people well, like the anvil hook, huh? It's an iPhone. I drew it. Yep. <laughs> Jessica drew it up herself. All right, we ready? Let's mm -hmm. draw it random. <laughs> Who do we have? We have Roy Conley with Blink Me, please. Roy Conley, right? Yep. Roy Conley, you are the first winner of the Anvil Hook Blank. So, you'd be the first person to actually make one of these. Who knows? If you get with us through the contact email in the description, we'll get this shipped out to you post-haste. All right. Next one. Bam. Another, right? Another. Another. Go. Who do we have? Ninja Mouse with Swedge Time. <laughs> Ninja Mouse. Not Swedge Time, but Hook Time. <laughs> if Ninja Mouse would like this anvil hook blank, <laughs> contact us through the contact link description. <laughs> do it. Do it now. <laughs> Getting all the impressions. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Throwing out my voice doing that. And anvil hook blank number three. Shall we? we shall. shall we? We have Gary Brown forging on with I would love some blanks. Hey, Gary hey, Brown forging on. Congratulations. You, sir, are a winner of this anvil hook blank. Get with us through the contact link in the description. You know how it's done? Gary Brown's won before a couple times. So congratulations, Gary Brown. Congratulations to all the winners that won all the hook blanks. Um, greatly appreciate you all. Uh, I do have a plan. Hopefully, what we'll see in the next giveaway live stream, uh, if I can get them in, if I can get them in the amount of time, uh, I plan on giving away 
hopefully I'll be able to give away some tongs. So give away some tong blanks um, and uh, be able to do that. And so I, I'm really, really looking forward to that. So hopefully that'll work out really well and, and that'll happen in the next one. Uh, they're not my tong blanks. I'm not saying who they are yet, but I'll hopefully have some tong blanks in hand that I can give away. And uh, looking forward to doing that, huh, hon? Mm -hmm. Yep. She's typing up every, all the yeah, winners in the. Everybody. She's tagging everybody right now in the comment uh, of who won. So if you're on that list, do your due diligence and uh, due process and all the other good stuff. Get with us soon, rather than later. So you're all very, you're all very welcome. And trust me, we haven't forgot. We'll be giving away the swedge block in just a few minutes. So. Let the comments slow down. Let the comments slow down now. It's okay. It's quiet time. <laughs> it's quiet time. Okay, children. <laughs> time to go to sleep now. Time to refill my glass of water. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. While Jessica entertains you with her amazingness. Ninja Mouse says, uh, Jeff Glenn, don't feel bad. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever won anything on YouTube. Yeah. Congratulations, Ninja Mouse. Congratulations. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Hepatitis Ironworks, Jesse Garza says, was early on my spamming. Sorry. <laughs> Keisha Cope, thank you for helping everyone through this platform. You're welcome. You're very welcome. And no. she said that her 12-year-old son is watching our videos and getting into blacksmithing. Super awesome. So glad to inspire our young one to get into it. So that is very awesome. Hope he does really, really well in the future. Um, Speargrass Forge had, added, had a question for me. So that baptismal, are you raising it or dishing it? Well, it depends on your definition. Um, so our definition now, I used to say classical definition, but it, that is incorrect because depending on what time period you are, that classical classical definition of raising versus sinking or dishing are two separate things. Um, so the definition that is the modern standard, the gold standard that people go by, I'm technically sinking or dishing the bowl. If you go by the classical definition, what I'm actually currently doing right now is raising the bowl. It's two sides of the same coin, basically. Um, when you're sinking something, you have a hollow underneath and you are stretching and effacing the material over that hollow. So you are sinking something. You're depressing something down into something when you're sinking in a sinking operation. That stops, however, does not matter whether it's on that back side, the inside of the bowl or the outside of the bowl, when that material makes contact with an anvil stake, the bottom of your sinking dish, whatever it is, that switches from sinking then to raising because now you are actually dis you are distributing the material differently. You're not taking away from, now you are pushing the material with each hammer blow. And so therefore that, that then goes into the raising department. You can raise a bowl from the back side of a bowl, pushing forward like you see people do with cups and all sorts of other stuff. And then you can also raise it from the front side of the bowl or the inside of the bowl. You can move material to the outside or move material to the bottom of the bowl just by um, your hammer blows and, and how they're connecting with the piece and interacting with the material and, and moving the moving the material to the bottom of the bowl. So um, so right now, technically, what I'm doing earlier, I was sinking, and I'm doing a mix. I'm sinking and raising the baptismal uh, font. If you look at some really old articles on repousse or repousse work, and you look at some really old articles and books that were written right around the turn of the century. If you read up on some of those, when they reference old work or the, the older work of, you know, craftsmen of yesteryear, right? Which is not funny to think about somebody in the 1900s, 1901, talking about somebody in the past, right? It's, it's weird, the perspective. 
oftentimes you'll find when it's mentioned about sinking or raising, um, they use them interchangeably a lot um, in that reference material. So, said, yeah, that was my understanding of it. Raising was pushing, where sinking or dishing is stretching. That's why I asked. Thanks, Roy. Yep, you're very welcome. So, um, there's an argument to be made that you know, oh, you're stretching the material when you're contacting the stake, but that's not it's not really what it is. So, whether you're contacting the stake or you're contacting the anvil surface, or you're contacting the dishing stumps surface, when, you, when that material can no longer move away from the hammer, you're no longer forming, you're forging. Once it starts pinching that material and it displaces that material to someone somewhere else, you have now begun, begun the process of pushing the material where you need it, or raising that material. So it, it's, and again, it, go around the world, everybody will have a little bit different definition of it. The common accepted definition of raising is over stakes nowadays, because that's what's been popularized. Uh, but the classical definition goes, basically is pointing to what you're actually doing, what the material is doing, not the operation or what tools you're using. Dogbone Knives, hello. Hello. And Lux yeah. Masters Plus, welcome to the Bellows Boy. <laughs> uh, in addition to the... Uh... Thank you, Flux Masters Plus. <laughs> Whew, that's a, that's a word and a half, huh? Yeah. Oh, we've got a lot of names up there on that membership yeah, wall, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> New member of Black Color well, Army. I wonder if it's going to be the Flux Master Army next, right? Uh, it might be. You're going to have, like, how many computers you got? <laughs> how many counts? <laughs> Keisha said, my, fun, my son has recently started working on a leaf. Awesome. Awesome. Got a lot of great playlists on the channel about leaves, so hopefully that helps. Dan's Creations at Adventure said, isn't forging the same as forming? No, it is not. So, so forging, specifically, forging specifically relates to the change of a cross-sectional uh, of the cross section of a material, right? So, so if you're forging something, you are changing rapidly its cross section. So you're either upsetting, you're doing one or the two. You are either you are either upsetting the material, so you're taking something long and skinny and making it short and fat, or you're making something short and fat and you're transferring it long and skinny. That there is the very basics or basis of forging. Now, what falls into that category, that's really open up to um, subjection, right? It's, it's just subjector, right? It's just people and say, oh, that's not forging or that is forging. The basis of forging is the, the changing of the cross-sectional thickness of the material and its length, right? Forming, however, you're not changing its cross-sectional thickness. You are bending it, twisting it. Um, you, you're not changing its specific mechanical properties in, in any one given thing. You are forming it. So uh, easiest way I could say this is think of something like a fold-formed bowl. It's not a fold-forged bowl. It is, you are forging. You're heating it. You're beating it, right? That's what we think of as forging but it's called a fold form bowl because the act that we're doing, we're not trying to thin an area of material out. We are trying to raise a bump. Well, how do we raise a bump in that? We're not thinning stuff to each side because that would be forging. No, we are folding the material and then we're forming the material out like this, flying it out. And that makes a fold form bowl. Ductwork is not forging. If, if you're a tin knocker out there and you're knocking together, you know, sheet metal and you're putting cross breaks in material, that's not forging material, that's forming. You, you're forming something. Um, so those are those classic, so those are those technical definitions at their smallest scale. <clears throat> Again, what you want to call forging, other people might call forming. What you want to call forming, other people call forging um, because there's a lot of room for interpretation uh, uh, to to that speaking. So 
to, again, just to narrow it back in to what the essence of it is, is changing the cross-sectional material thickness and or length, right? You're stretching something out or you're shortening something and widening something up. That's forging. Forming is just, that's your bending, your twisting, um, you know, that, that sort of thing, right? Coiling, those are all forming techniques. When you forge a leaf, a leaf is forged up until the point when you start folding the leaf. When you start folding the leaf up and you open up, that's forming the leaf. It's not technically forging it anymore. You've, changed, you've done the forging, but we call it just a forged leaf, right? Like, we don't get that nitpicky. And if anybody's getting that nitpicky with you, need to, they, don't, they have too much time on their hands. They will drag you to their level and beat you with their experience. What's going on? I'm missing half the comments on my rants here. Uh, the Western Woodman says, love the technical stuff. Oh, good. So, yeah, I mean, the jargon, right? The jargon of this trade is very difficult. Blacksmithing jargon is difficult. And the reason why, and for those of you who don't know, people who are in the trades, I'm assuming there's a lot of people in here that are of, of the trades and been in the trades before. That's heating and air conditioning, mechanical, mechanical work, engineering, um, you know, electricians, plumbers, things like that. There's this little word called jargon. And that jargon is just how things are. If I told Jessica, Jessica, go grab me the pookie. I know what jargon is. There's some of you out here that are tin knockers know exactly what pookie is. Other people don't. I say, Sounds like a stuffed animal. she doesn't know the jargon, right? It's just the jargon of the trade. It is the very specific wording in the trade. And in all trades, except for blacksmithing, or I shouldn't, I shouldn't say all, but the majority of trades, except for blacksmithing, you have a long history of very specific jargon and technical terms. You have very specific history of technical terms that are universal. Doesn't matter if you're in Europe or you're here or you're wherever, there are some very universal terms, right? If you're putting ductwork together, ductwork's the same. They call it different. They say it in their language in another country, but ductwork is ductwork. Um, but in blacksmithing, we have the, the unfortunate pleasure of having to look back across time. And we can only go so back, so far back in the annals of history and find out what different tools of the trade were called or different processes were technically called. And those will differ from people of their ancestry. So if you, you know, the closest we have... <clears throat> is about the turn of the century. We've got turn of the century writings and things that we can look at back right around 1870s um, to about the 1900s, 1910s, 1920s, right? We've got a lot of information in there, and that's always referencing people of yesteryear, 100 years before themselves, or sometimes 200 years before themselves. But beyond that, who knows what they called it? They might not have called forging forging. We don't know. We don't have that. It's not written for us, um, so to speak, out there. Um, so we have a lot to diagnose that way, and that's where a lot of the technical jargon gets mixed up and mixed moxed around. So because some people will say that forging a bowl is not forging a bowl. That's not blacksmithing. If you put texture in that bowl, if you started with a lump of steel and hammered that out into a flat plate and then you push and then you formed it into a bowl shape, that's a forged bowl, like it's, it's forging. If you're texturing it, if you're doing a lot of manipulation to the material, that's forging. And then there's forming involved in it, but it's still technically blacksmith work. So, go ahead, sorry. Man, my rants, they're going on too long tonight, aren't they? <laughs> it's all right. Is anybody appreciating the rants, or should I shut up and we get on with the sweat block? <laughs> I have a couple of questions that people have some, you know, a couple of these people have asked over an hour ago, so I'll try yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, go ahead and answer. Uh, Dan Chomicia says, um, Roy, can you make hammers and axes with a fly press? Uh, yes, you can, if you've got a big enough fly press. Um, again, fly presses are a little bit different. That thing puts a heck of a squeeze 
on one inch material. It did a decent job on two inch ish square material. I wouldn't want to forge two inch square underneath it. So um, if you had the right dies in it and, and stuff, you could probably come along and do it. Um, is it going to be faster than a hydraulic press or a power hammer? No, it will not. It, it's slow. It's really good at really nice focused precision type work uh, is what a fly press is generally good for. But yeah, it'll still put out a good amount of squeeze. Uh, James, Small hammers. <laughs> James Klein, hey Roy, have you made any dies for your fly press to shape bowls? You must have missed a little earlier. You missed it, James Klein? Yes, I did. I made a bowling die. Oh! Like that. For small stuff. And that, I could take, I could get a piece of steel hot, eighth inch plate. I put my swedge block underneath there, chucked out on the fly press, and one hit, and it's made. <laughs> I feel like Denny's going to be all about that. Yep. You know? uh, Daniel Selfick says, hey, Roy, thanks for the videos. And I actually have a question for Jessica about uh, the enamel bowl from a way back. Have you used Frit, sorry on the spelling, for, uh, from ceramics for smithing? Um, Frit? Frit, yeah. I, Never I heard believe, of it. I believe Frit, if I'm not mistaken, is just small chunks of vitreous glass. Um, which I have used in uh, a couple of projects. My most recent video, um, Harold sent me some some of his uh, supplies, and I've been using those. So, yep. Yeah, I've used it a little bit. Uh, Adam Menon's couch says, Roy, how important is keeping up on my gas forge refractive coating? Um, it depends on what you have. So I have a cast refracted, um, I have cast castable refractory, um, liner in mine and my forge so for me it's not important at all uh, if you have if you have like cable or fiberboard or something like that um, as long as I'd say maybe once a year give it a good check over and if it looks like it's thinning out or there's some missed spots in it go ahead and get it coated again so once a year it's good any maintenance any maintenance on a tool, if, if you don't use it very often, maybe once every three years or something. But, but, if, but if you're going to use it daily and it's going to be something that you're going to use a lot, you're probably going to do it every 90 days. You're going to check the tools. You're going to have service that you're going to have to do on it. If it's something that you use once a week, maybe every, maybe every year, give it a check. Um, as long as you're not damaging it, it should be fine for a while. Daniel Selfick also says, speaking of leaves, Roy, do you have any recommendations for practice pieces, especially for young gort, for younger people, 11-year-old son, besides leaves? Um, hooks, horseshoe nail hooks. That'll develop stuff. Um, letter openers can be fun. You can add a leaf to them. You can add some twists to them. They're useful um, as long as you're okay with sharp-ish pointy objects. I know a lot of people, a lot of, you know, Younger smiths want to get into that to begin with, so you could do it. It's kind of dull. It's still a useful item uh, within reason. Really hooks, fire pokers, fireplace tools, that type of stuff um, can be very valuable because it teaches a lot of skills. Even if they're not technically useful to you, they, they help develop quite a few skills, quite a few smithing skills that you otherwise wouldn't get. Um, moving up from there, if he has any sort of architectural pursuits of interest, I would say maybe move into, you, you know, uh, doing some light scroll work on like plant hangers or things like that. Could be could be a fun, good beginner thing. It, it practices that kind of gives you a good, well-rounded uh, type deal there. And uh, some other people are saying bottle openers as well. I don't know how far back you are on the I, list yeah, of reading. So, okay, you're back current. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, some of the stuff like bottle openers, you can practice slitting and drifting on those things like that. The big important thing to think about is not necessarily how to learn a project, but how to learn a process, right? So think of things in process, not project. Because if you learn a project, okay, now you know how to make a bottle opener, but you only know how to make it one way. That's not going to be helpful to you in 50 years from now or 20 years or 10 years because you only ever made a bottle opener one way, and there's like a gazillion ways to make a bottle opener out there. So learn the process. Well, what's what process is there in forging a bottle opener? The main process is the slitting and drifting to make a, you know, a, a church key bottle opener, right? Like that's, 
That's the main process, is learning how to drift a hole and make a hole bigger than what it started in, in a bar, and, and control your heats and control your forging. That's the big learning part of making a bottle opener. So that's why it's valuable. Even if you're never going to drink or you don't know anybody who drinks and whatever, it's, it's valuable to take and drift holes into bars like that because that will go down the route, just using the bottle opener as an example. If he wants to make a hammer at a later date, it's the same process. Slitting and drifting a hole is the same in a bottle opener as it is in a thick bar of steel, as it is in a fence picket, as it is for a window grip, as it is for a fire poker where you do a pass through in the handle and wrap the tail stock around. It's, it, it's, it's very universal in that nature. Same thing with the scrolls, right? Um, if you learn how to scroll work, you get a good eye. The main purpose of that, you get a good eye for negative space and how to have controlled, repeatable hammer blows. And so that can be very valuable. So making a shepherd's crook and things like that with some scroll work on it can be very valuable learning tool. Whether the crook is any good or useful afterwards or not, that's kind of irrelevant. The point is to practice the actual skill that's involved. And then everything else will get better along, along that route once you figure out what you want to do. See here, um, James Klein says, Roy, have you ever made any loggerheads? Loggerheads, nope. Don't know what those are, or they're not coming to me right now. Dan's Creation says, what is your heat of the summer kind of temperature there, and how do you combat the working in the forge? Hmm. Good questions. So um, the, the heat and the t temperature up here, we get about three weeks, three solid weeks of brutal, probably 90 degree temperatures. I would say 90, 98, upper 90s, right? Lower and upper 90s. We get about three weeks of that every summer up here. At least it has been for the last two years. And then, like today is a hot day. Yesterday was like in its, set, what, like 70s as a high. The day before that was like in its 60s. So, you know, we get a lot of really cool temperatures. And we follow like Ohio, which is just south of us, we, we follow Ohio temperatures about a month behind. So whatever Ohio has, we're about a month behind that. It's the same thing like if you go to Kentucky or Tennessee, they're about a month difference than Ohio. About Tennessee is about a month's difference than Ohio. So the further south you go on that spe spectrum. Um, so that's kind of where our temperatures are, uh, you know, during summer. As far as how do I deal with the heat, um, the best way you do it, you get rid of the hair, get rid of the insulating factor. Some of you like to wear ball caps. Sometimes it's just good. Like it's instantly 20 degrees cooler right now on top of my head. Your head is your thermostat for your body. Um, so you can regulate a lot of your body temp just by what you're doing with your head. And so my, my favorite method to mitigate heat and heat exhaustion and things like that is get yourself a bandana or a wet rag or whatever you want to do. I like a bandana because I can tie it up like a pirate. Pirate Roy. Probably shouldn't even do it on, shouldn't even do it on camera because I'll mess it up. I can tie it up like that and I can soak this. Take five seconds. I can soak this with water and keep it soaked with cold water. And when I feel it get hot, the top of my head get hot again, I soak it down with cold water again. And then I can keep on forging. And so that's how I've done heat in the past. Um, my shop, my old shop in, my old shop in Ohio, uh, of course, we'd get 100 degree temps, and it would be 140 in my shop because I had a small workspace and I had tons of forging to do, so it could be 140 degrees in my shop. And I'd take a lot of breaks when I need it, work 30 minutes on, take it, take 45 minutes off, 30 minutes on, 45 minutes off. And between that time, you're hydrating and you're cooling yourself down with wet rags. And doing it around the back of your neck as well, it's another good way. Get a towel, short, small short towel. Get it soaked in some ice. Get some ice water in a cooler with ice in it. You know, get some ice. You know how a cooler will have water that sit in the bottom? Soak you some towels in that and just wrap it around your neck. And it's a quick way 
of kind of bringing your body temp down if you're getting a little out of hand. Now, there's a point to that. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a healthcare professional, but you don't want to go into shock. You don't want to do that to somebody who is way over boiling to the point of heat exhaustion or heat stroking out. You, you don't want to go too fast the opposite direction, right? Um, so you, you do have to kind of use your brain. Again, this is your thermostat. Know your limits. If you, start, if you stop sweating, get out of the forge. It's not worth your life. Get out of the forge, get hydrated, and make sure that you, you know, put a cool rag around your head and, uh, you know, get into the coolie. I don't care if you have to get in your vehicle. A lot, a lot of people's vehicles have air conditioning. Hop in the vehicle, turn the AC on blast, and sit there. Let the gasoline burn, baby, because you, you need to get cool if you don't have a cool spot to be at your house. Whatever, you just got to learn to get away from it for a little bit. What else we got? Let's see here. Uh, Daniel Crawford says, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. If you're thirsty, mm -hmm. you're already dehydrated. <laughs> yep. Tobacco-free catfish. So you bake like bread in your old shop. <laughs> basically. Yep, basically. Do that all the time. Uh, Tim O'Connor, no, we weren't close to Erie when we were in Ohio, basically. Mm -hmm. We were in the Dayton Southern area. Southern Ohio. Well, southwestern Ohio. I guess. Just outside of Dayton, west outside of Dayton, Ohio. James Klein said the loggerheads were used to heat your drink. Kind of looks like a fire poker back in the days before electricity. You okay. Would the loggerhead in the fire. Yeah, no, nope, I got it now. Okay, got it. Yeah, no, I've never made any of those. I was, I was wondering where the terminology, I thought it was an old, older terminology. I, I, I remember reading on those. Never done them, though. Ninja Mouse says, I've seen a lot of people prefer the side draft. Wanted to hear your thoughts on side versus on draft. Um, so uh, doing the side side blast or, or bottom blast forges, uh, I would, I, I don't have, I don't have an opinion on the side. I would like to try one if someone has one. You know, I, I'd love to try a side blast. Uh, Right now, mine's bottom, and that's all I've ever used. I've used a bottom blast forge, and that's what I use. I will say with Coke, it's not as handy with Coke when you're burning Coke in it. Uh, the Coke has a tendency to kind of cling and kind of cram together and kind of pack. And it packs down, and it blocks a lot of the airflow that comes through. Um, so having a side blast where it's blowing the air in this way and your heavy piece of steel sitting here on a pile of coals that it's blowing from the side makes a lot more sense. So that's that's my thoughts on that. Well, Jacob Cotton says, I'm a welder in Wisconsin. The company gave us three bandanas that cool you down by wicking the sweat from your head. Yeah, that's cool. usually what you yep. said. Yeah, I think I'm pretty well caught up. So we are about uh, five minutes from seven. When do we want to give away the sweat block? Hmm? So we're about five minutes from seven o'clock. Well, let's see here. We could do it now if anybody wants to do the sledge block. Yeah, there's been a few people that have yeah. been quite persistent with their sledge block comments. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Warming up. Well, yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll get to that. That'll be good. Okay. Sound good? Yeah, sounds P good. People are people are warming up. So just to, just to put it out there, if you're spamming the comments with sledge block during the whole during the whole stream. Well, while we're doing it, before we actually give away a swedge block, or I say it specifically that we're giving away the swedge block, you're kind of just wasting everybody's time, including yourselves. So, you know, use this time to actually get information or learning, and then obviously we're going to give it away. But we're not going to scroll back 400 comments and pick your name because mm -hmm. you put swedge block in 4,000 comments ago. That's just that's not going to happen. We'll give away the swedge block when we say, hey, we're giving away the swedge block. Start putting in your comments now, right? Mm -hmm. So like, when you hear that out of our mouths, we intention to give away the swedge block. So That's right. like now, let's do it now, okay? Everybody sound good? We're going to do a swedge block giveaway. All righty, all righty. So everybody go ahead and start typing in with your little fingers. Hit the like button. That's right. Hit the like button. Well, I think we should share the details, the USA and stuff like that. 
Should we? we should. Is it not in the details down below? It is, but not everybody gets to read that before they call Nobody it. ever reads the description, do they? <laughs> go ahead, share it, Jessica. Okay. You go ahead. Let's see. The um, In order, so all of our other giveaway items Talk earlier. Up. All of our other items earlier were open to anywhere in the world, but the swedge block is only open to the United States and Puerto Rico. And also, you have to be uh, age 18 or older. Otherwise, if you are under 18, your guardian has to claim the swedge block for you. So I think that summarizes. Yep, and that's how that works. Yep. So, yep. Somebody, if somebody foreign wins it, you'll have like $1,000 in shipping. <laughs> well, we're not, we'll yeah. have to redraw. Yeah, we'll redraw for it. So, <laughs> and, and that's why it doesn't go international, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> it'd be more than $1,000 in shipping, Probably I'm sure. Probably would be for the way it's Right done. now, yeah, it would be. So, mm. we ready? Yes, we're ready. <laughs> There's a lot of gimme, gimme, gimme. There is. <laughs> Everybody knows how to spam with class. They spam do. with class. Mm. All right, we're going to draw for that 50-pound Holland Anvil swedge block. I have to shout out Holland Anvil again. Thank you, Holland Anvil, for providing the swedge block to us at a reduced cost, so this way we could get out 12 of them this year. This is this is swedge block number six. <clears throat> so there's six more to go this year that we'll be giving away, and then we'll see what next year will be. It'll be the year of dot, dot, dot. Who knows? Mm -hmm. We'll have to see what other type of big tooling we can give away, big shop tooling. We ready? Yes, we are. Steady? Ready, steady. Go. Who do we have? We have Sean Anderson with Swedge Block, please. Hey, congratulations, Sean Anderson. Congratulations. And hey, <laughs> Sean Anderson, he is a channel member. I looked up at the channel member wall. Uh, yeah, He's he has, right he there. Has, he has the little anvil next to his thing. Yeah, right on. Congratulations, Sean Anderson. You are the winner of the 50 pound Holland Anvil swedge block for this week, yep. for this month. So congrats, Sean Anderson. Make sure you get with us through the contact link in the description, okay? And we'll get that shipped out to you pronto, when we can. Pronto. A pronto. <laughs> All right. Blue. The chat just stopped. <laughs> I see there, I, I, two people. Yeah, 102. All right, now we'll see how many people bounce. There you go. See, we just lost them. Down to it, it always works. One of these times we should do this stream and then never give away a swedge block. Oh, yeah. And then, like, pop on, mm -hmm. like, 10 minutes later mm -hmm. and say, just for the real diehards. Oh, yeah. That would be pretty funny. Like, in the stream, like, okay, we'll have a great one. And then just mm -hmm. end the stream and then... Like no. 10 minutes later, just give away the swedge block at the very, very, very end. In the end credits or something. Yeah, just in the end credits. So <laughs> $10 super chat from Black Collar Ironworks. Thank you, sir. Greatly appreciate that. <laughs> Justin Ray said, good luck getting rid of me. <laughs> well, we're down to 95 now, according to our count. So uh, that, that's, that's how that works. You give away the big item that everyone's sticking around for. So... <laughs> Like I said, we'll do some tricky stuff. Maybe we ought to start doing some tricky stuff for the next six one, six of them, huh? Maybe. Yeah. People are like, no fair. I'm like, well, I should have stuck around. Should have cared about the content. Oh. Yeah. Eric <laughs> says some of us don't leave till we're kicked off. <laughs> yeah, I know some of you guys are. Yeah, you all are my favorite. So. You guys are around for a while. Yeah, you all are my favorites. It's, it's one of those deals that, like, you know, should say this at the beginning of the streams, really. Um, I know there's some of you guys out there that have been channel watchers and supporters for a long time. You don't like the giveaway streams because it seems like everybody and their brother shows up into them. Um, they're really great for the growth of the channel. And when I say growth of the channel, I would like to be able to teach and instruct and have impact on as many people as I can right, and share as much knowledge as I can. It doesn't help to have 1,550 videos plus if no one's watching them, if they're not getting out there in front of eyeballs and they're not, and they're not helpful. They're just useless. It's just chaff at that point, right? And so, so the live streams are a really great way of getting people in on that. 
Um, but to, to you know, talk about that a little bit more, if you're a person that comes into a live stream, and you're welcome. Chris Carpenter. Chris Carpenter, thank you for the $5 super chat. If you're a person that just comes in for the live streams because you're hoping to win something and that's it, you're really missing out on a great community of people to hang out with on a Friday night and talk to and get questions answered that you may have in your own shop and share about your journey. Like, you're missing out on some great friendships and camaraderie uh, that we have here on the channel if all you're here for is the giveaways. Like, if that's all you're here for, you're kind of missing out, you know, which some people, that's okay with, you know, okay with them. They're happy to be missing out on everything. They're shallow. They're about as shallow as a mud puddle in the desert, right? They, they just, just shallow. And yeah, that's, if you feel offended, then most likely you're that person. So <laughs> just FYI, join the community. Join the community. Become a part of this group. All the camaraderie that goes on here, you will meet flat, amazing people. You will. And heck, you might even meet people right in your same neighborhood. You never know, right? And you get to talk to them, and they're like, hey, I'm just 10 miles down the road. There's been so many times that's happened on this mm -hmm. channel. Yeah, in the live streams, mm -hmm. in the live streams, people having side chats with one another, and somebody says, hey, I'm having a hard time finding blacksmith coal. And somebody else will comment, like, where do you live at? And you're like, well, I live here. And somebody will be like, hey, I live right down the road from that. You can come up to my place. And they exchange info, right, later on, mm -hmm. right? And, and again, that's just about us being the hub of the community. And I don't try to say that to be facetious in any way or try to be, like, toting an ego. I'm just saying, like, think of Christ Center Ironworks or any YouTube blacksmithing community that you can get a part of as a centralized hub. It's like having a club without having a club, right? It's a place that you can belong. It's a place where you can enjoy the friendship of others because we're all in this trying to enjoy this great craft that is blacksmithing. There's some that feel they look like they're a little further along than you are, and then there's others that look like they're a little behind where you are. And we all get to take and, you know, uh, be out there helping one one another. And, and that's really what's great about it. So, so I invite you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Get a part of the community. Get a part of the live streams on Friday nights. You know, we do them every other Friday night, usually, generally speaking. So every two weeks. Well, so from now, they'll be, we'll miss a week, and it'll be the second week. So it'll be the first week in July, right? Mm -hmm. We'll be doing a Friday night live stream. July 2nd. July 2nd. Come, join, be there. There's not going to be anything given away, um, but it's going to be a hoop load of fun. There's going to be a lot of people. Yep. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people here, a lot of talented blacksmiths a lot of really genuine people to hang out with. And, and you should come. Subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Set it. Become a part of the group. Become a part of the group. So, and, uh, and I like to extend that offer to each and every last person. I don't care anything. I, I don't care where you stand. I don't care your political thoughts. I don't care religion. I don't care persuasion. I don't care about any of those things. Join the community of blacksmiths that are here on YouTube. Get to know the people. You won't be sad that you did. Really won't. So, um, hell, you might not like me at all. Go join John at Black Bear Forge's community. <laughs> go go join Yamez's at Island Metal Forge, or, or Troy and Eli at Bar Run Forge, or, 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 or whoever, right? Like, go, go join somebody else, right? Like, somebody else's blacksmithing community, but just get a part of the blacksmithing community that is online and, you know, and, yeah, get the help and get the advice and get all the stuff you need. And thank you for the $5 super chat. Somebody came in while I was running my mouth. Black collar. Black collar and ironworks, yep. Army. And join the <laughs> army. <laughs> yes, and join the army. Do what he did. Like a lot. <laughs> that way we can start giving some power hammers away around here or something. So. Jay Huyson says, thank you for your videos. I am a budding hobbyist, hot metal worker. I have learned how to do some things. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Very welcome. Glad to have you. And don't be afraid to take a break from the channel either. If, you, if 
I'm rubbing you the wrong way, it's probably because you spent too much time with me. Just ask Jess. <laughs> it's okay to take a break. <laughs> to take a breather. Go get in your own quiet space for a while. <laughs> Turn the Roy off. You have the luxury. She don't. <laughs> Robert Lonis, thank you for the four ninety nine super chat, brother. Thank you. Oh. Gary Brown says we all help each other out and support each other. Yep, you guys do indeed. Harold Hodgkinson says, what are you going to be making on the next stream? Hmm. I don't think you've committed to anything just yet, have you? I have not committed, I have not committed to anything just yet. Um, but uh, thank you, Rob, by the way, for the shipping offset funds. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, one thing I had thought about is I thought we might have a little bit of fun with the fly press. Crush some stuff, go over some of the bits and bobs about it, and show show off some of its features and kind of get a close-up shot on it and kind of see what it can and can't do, right? Maybe some different thicknesses of material, do stuff like that. There's a lot of questions around the fly press, so that might be, that might be a fun thing to do. Um, I don't want to start a project just yet because I'm kind of embroiled into several projects right now, like heavy, intense stuff. So I'd rather just do something fun. And that might be fun. It's mindless, just crushing stuff. <laughs> just crushing stuff and, and, and having fun. Um, we might do, some, might do some crushed pipe work, show you guys stuff like that, how to make things like that. That's copper. That could even be interesting in steel, too. Like I think that put, that piece I got enamel, but even so, oh. just in steel, it'd be cool. Somebody said, do hope something your way Maybe, off. Yeah, I was going to read something up there, but... So, you got you got to keep up. Today. Daniel Crawford, have you all thought about doing an enamel coat on a skillet yet? My kiln is not big enough. Yep, not big enough. <laughs> have to be a wee baby yeah, It had to get hot, thing. yep. <laughs> <laughs> What else we got? Let's see, the box maker. You're going to become a crush channel now. LOL. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I gotta go back up here. I'm trying to find. Brian. Nicholson. Okay. Uh, Davos Firebeard had said, uh, "Hope you're not pre Hopefully, you're not pushing the price of hand secondhand fly presses. I probably am. Unfortunately, I thought about that too myself. I'm like, man." I bet you the fly presses are going to go insane now in, in price after my, you know, <laughs> after my little diatribe into doing fly presses. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Roy's Candy Crush Saga. <laughs> ah, that would be funny. That'd be great. So, I mean, what what do you all think about that? Do you think that's a great idea for the next live stream to crush some stuff and do some various forging under the under the fly press. So I thought about doing some crushed pipe work because that's kind of interesting uh, in of itself. So you do stuff like this. You can add that to projects. Um, you know, we could do some copper, do some copper pipe underneath it. We could do some steel, uh, you know, do, do different things like this, show that off. So. Mountain Home Forge cool. says, Jessica needs a new toy now, a bigger kiln, lol. I, eventually, yeah, yeah, I've got some other yep. things I want to get into before I go buy enough. I, I have, I think it's a uh, large par paragon, or maybe an even heat kiln. Thank you, like, Chris Schaefer. It's like a $3,000 kiln, though, so it'll be a little while. <laughs> Thank you, everybody who's been super chatting while I've been running my mouth. Thank you so much. Greatly yep. appreciate it. Rob so. Huff earlier? Oh, yeah, to offset the shipping funds. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Rob Huff. And thank you, Daniel Schaefer, right? Daniel, Chris, or Chris Schaefer. Chris Schaefer. Chris Schaefer. Thank you, Chris Schaefer. Really appreciate it. Everybody give them a round of applause. So give everybody, um, you know, all the support that you guys give, it, it goes into these giveaway things. So um, I just greatly appreciate it. Uh, you know, it allows me to go out and get a bunch of the tongs and the stuff we're going to give away in the, the, the next giveaway live stream we do. Um, it, it helps out. It helps out in big ways. Sane C says it's really cool what y'all are doing. God bless. Hey, God bless you. I'm glad glad you can make it. And yeah, we enjoy it. I want to give away stuff, bigger stuff at some point. Hopefully we can keep growing this thing. 
Um, some people have the misconstrued idea that a large channel number when it comes to like subscribership means you make a ton of money on YouTube and that's just not the case. Um, I wish it was, I wish it was, but there's people who make $100,000 a year with 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. They, they just have a, such a dedicated, hardcore following, right? And, and they make crazy money, six figures easy. <coughs> and then there's people who have millions of subs and they don't make six figures. They, they don't even make a couple grand on YouTube. Um, and it's just, again, it, it depends on their ad share and it depends on so many factors, right? And things like that. So, you know, it, you, I wish I wish the subscribership was a good metric. Like you could guarantee like, okay, when I get to 100,000 subs, I'll be making $100,000, right? Like that'd be great. But that's just not the way it works. And so I hope to grow <coughs> not only the reach of the channel to more subscribers, but I do hope that that, that back end, that financial end continues to grow with it too as well. So this way we can continue to up the things that we do, right? And up the giveaway things and up the amount every stream um, when we do those stuff. A lot of people don't see it. We do a lot of charitable stuff on the side that's not connected to YouTube in any sort of way. Um, whenever I meet somebody who's just getting into it, you know, and they come over to the shop or, or I get a chance to teach somebody, I'll do that. And a lot of times I give away tools. I give away all sorts of stuff. Um, as well as I think Smiths, uh, well-established Smiths in this field should do, should help bring up that next generation uh, when they can. And, you know, not, the younger generation shouldn't expect anything, but the older generation should be able to give without having anybody expect anything. Um, that's just my own, that's my own opinion, you know, when it comes to that. Um, so I just hope to kind of continue doing that. We have a lot of really dedicated people really dedicated people on this channel and supporters that break, make these streams possible. And I'm not just saying like the quality content, because you're watching this on a cell phone, okay? Let's just be honest here. This has not been our best quality stream by, con uh, by technological standards as speaking, but like the content's there, the heart's there, the community's there, and that's what makes it a great stream to be a part of is the community, right? It's the community aspect of it. And, uh, you know, giving away items, swedge blocks, last time you checked, they ain't cheap. Swedge blocks aren't cheap. I don't know if anybody's looked at steel prices. <coughs> it's not cheap. Heck, those blanks aren't cheap <laughs> to make. They're not. <laughs> They've went up 400%. <laughs> Our cost, right? Like, you, you know, but we still give them out for free. You know, uh, when we give away tong blanks, when we get some tong blanks in, again, they're not, they're not cheap, you know. And so um, you can thank everybody in the stream that has been donating and, and donating their time and donating their eyeballs and donating their efforts and donating their money and, and all those things. You all deserve all the praise, and they really do, really do thank you guys a lot. So, you know. Just kind of keep pointing that out there. Got to keep making sure I point the fingers back where they belong. So, greatly appreciated, everyone. Here's one I've uh, missed a couple of times. The bottom maker points out, Roy, is your coal forge lined with anything? Kenny still wants to know. Um, no, it's not lined with anything. It's just steel. Um, I've got a cast iron fire pot, and I have a, a basically a tin body or used to be tin. It's just rusted metal now. <laughs> it's a rusted metal body that I need to replace, but pretty thin material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just a cast iron fire pot that sits in there. Yeah, that's good enough. Dan's Creation says, okay, let me try this one last time. Roy, you've stated that you're a first-generation blacksmith in your family. Mm -hmm. What's your first recolle recollection of falling in love with blacksmithing? When I was about five years old at Carriage Hill Metro Park. So it's my first recollection of it. So, um, I, yeah, I had to been five. Yeah, I was five. Because, yeah, yep, about then. So that's a long, long time ago now. <laughs> but, yeah, it was, 
it was one of those interesting things. I just thought it, uh, I always, I've always been a kid that's been really good with my hands, making, you know, making things. I was always tinkering, no matter what, Legos and Tinker Toys and, and uh, you know, connector sets, like stuff like that. It was always my favorite. Anything with motors, gizmos, gadgetry of any sort, that, like, that's always been my thing. Um, so, 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 yeah, so seeing blacksmithing, seeing something go from, nothing and become something I could recognize. Um, and I wore a little horseshoe nail ring away from the, mm -hmm. you know, from the event. It was really cool. So, yep. <laughs> Ninja Mouse, you need to tell Jessica to quiet it down. She's talking way too much, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> How most of our live streams go. Yeah, yeah, Jessica just, mm -hmm. man, you can't get her to shut up once you get her going. <laughs> Oh, um, entertain for a second. I'll be right back. Surprise. I'm it. Surprise. You're it. Surprise. Um, let's see here. G. Taylor, glad that you were able to make it, uh, that we were able to help turn your off day around. At a Memnon's couch, you have to go. Uh, have a good night yourself. Mountain Home Forge. Yes, the metal prices did go crazy. Um, we have been trying very hard not to raise, raise the prices on our blank. So they're still the same prices that we originally set out with, but I'm hoping very much so that the steel prices go down soon. <laughs> Daniel Crawford says, forging and kilts make you more money on YouTube. Giggle, giggle. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Roy's gonna fall for that. Daniel, I like that idea of braiding some copper wire and then crushing it into both marks. That could be cool. I, I jotted that down because we might try that out. That'd be nifty. Uh, Eric says, saving up for some blocks. Hope the price doesn't go up. Yeah, those um, the set of blocks would be a really good one to get. Uh, the block like we're giving away, the last I heard, it's currently priced at $200, and that's free shipping in the United States. Or they do have the, the set of three swedge blocks that I think is over $500. <laughs> Black Collar Ironworks, thank you for the $5 super chat to keep me talking. <laughs> Elijah wants to know if anyone in the chat is a second or third generation blacksmith. Back. How'd she do, ladies and gents? <laughs> well, Black Collar gave me $5 to keep talking. Keep talking, Jess. I'm still going. That's time for me to shut up then. Oh. Um... <laughs> here we haven't oh yeah I was gonna say we haven't uh we took the kids to go swimming the other day and uh it was like 80 degrees when we went down to Lake Huron and I went over and I dipped my toes in it was like 50 degree water I'm like no we need like two more months of heat before it's time to go for a swim so <laughs> oh, well Lake is very cold this time of year still <laughs> but, oh entertainment huh <laughs> yep Wiley says, look for pottery kilns. I see them on OfferUp and Craigslist pretty often. A PID controller isn't difficult to add. Um, I had been looking at a few kilns. Problem with pottery kilns is they're top loading. And so with enameling, like you need to be able to, most of your pieces aren't in. Even a really large bowl I did wasn't in over 10 minutes. So um, you have really to access them in and out. Yeah, fairly there's quickly. a lot of in and out, and you want to close the door as quickly as mm -hmm. possible so that you're not losing all your heat. Yeah. Rob Huff has a great question. Said, um, will we be coming down for yeah. Quad State? Will we be coming down for Quad State? Yes, we will. Most certainly. Great question. Um, that is the plan this year. Well, I guess I shouldn't say most certainly. I should say that is the plan. Our plan is to come down for Quad State. So. Ninja Mouse, uh, the kiln I purchased is a Paragon SC3, um, and it's the taller one. It's, I think, uh, something like six and a half inches cubed, the diameter of the opening. So about about a five and a half inch bowl is all I can fit in there. <laughs> Techron Mac. Oh, Jesse's been waiting for an hour for Roy to get his rant finished, so patience, LOL. <laughs> Black Collar Ironworks, we should sing and do it. But then we would be demonetized. Yes. <laughs> Rob Rob Huff, great, man. 
It is huh, right? Yeah. I am saying it yeah. right. Okay, I, I, I just, pronu- I, I keep... I mispronounced it for like two years solid. I know, like, oh, I keep no. second guessing myself. I know him <laughs> for a reason. So yeah, oh, don't start that again. Don't start that again. I know. We don't want to go the hoe route. So, <laughs> is that Rob Ho? He's like, I finally got her straightened out. <laughs> yeah, it's Rob Huff. Rob Huff, yes, so. Rob Huff. Yeah, no, it'll be good to catch up with you. It'll be good to see yeah. Ed and Brian again. Wonder if they'll even remember me. They'll be like, Roy who? <laughs> <laughs> DK Ironworks, uh, enamel is um, fused to about 1,450 degrees. <laughs> the Baca Maker remembers the stream when we corrected that. <laughs> You've been around for a little while. <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> Wayne Hyde says, not fair. She didn't make any noise when you were talking. <laughs> LOL. Yeah. So, um, I do have one thing I want to say, unless you want to keep going. Go ahead. You are doing a marvelous job. Oh, yeah. Doing a marvelous job. Reacting to the comments. So, since we've got a smaller group here, the dedicated group, right? The 56, right? (laughs) Call them the 56ers. (laughs) Or we'll call them whatever the group is that's channel members, because even if they're not channel members, they've been around a while. So, what? So, probably, let's say, these are like the top 100. Sure. People yeah. are in the stream right now. You're all top within the top club. 100, right? The mm-hmm. top 100 club that's currently watching this stream that's been going for two hours and 20 minutes. Um, so since the smaller group, um, I had an idea for uh, you know for the content on the channel that I that I want to get back into doing. So we'll see how it goes long term. But my idea or my concept idea is to go back to doing some daily videos, okay? Doing one video a day, and that video is a project-based video based upon something that you all out there in the community would like to see. So in the video's comment section, you comment what you would like to see the next video technically to be. and I was thinking either doing that or making it part of like the members start kick it off with the maybe the members, um, since that's like a smaller group of people versus just anybody saying forge a knife, right? You know, like mm-hmm. instead of it just being any anybody and their brother doing it, and maybe make it to the smaller group first and say suggest the next video in the yeah. thing. Those who have been um, around the longest though, like people recognize and vote for the yeah. names they recognize. Yeah, yeah, do that maybe. Yeah, those that have been around the longest or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. like vote like with a like on yeah. that person's comment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we could do something like that, a voting structure. I haven't fully fleshed that out, but I wanted to do something where it was more in the moment. Now, this will be all dependent on me getting through the mountain load of work that I've got on my plate right mm-hmm. now. Um, to get through in the next several months. So if I could get through that, I would like to do that to where, you know, it's a daily content thing where I can forge something. People want to say, hey, I would like to see you forge whatever. It might be a spoon, a fork, a spork, right? Whatever. And then that's my next day's video. Mm -hmm. So I would film it, say in the morning, edit it in the PM, right? Kind of edit it. It, around dinner time or so after dinner and get it up by evening uh, the next day and then c- just do that for you know anywhere from about 30 to 90 days worth of content would anybody be interested in that or would me posting more turn everybody off and everybody be like ah, he's posting too much again <laughs> wiley you're going to get a lot of knife requests wayne heinz i have seen the editing process in all that is a lot of work uh, Ninja Mouse, I'd like to see someone do a real in-depth step-by-step building of a forge and not just show but explain whys and why nots. Chris Schaefer, yeah. a wrapped axe. Uh, Mountain Home okay. Forge says it's a good idea. Okay. Don't start dropping comments of what you <laughs> want just yet. Uh, again, I won't remember in four months. So, so but, but is it good, yay, or nay? Bad idea for you personally. So... Um, just want to kind of get the fillers out there because if people don't feel like it's valuable, I probably won't waste the effort. So I, I, I just won't waste the effort. So it does take a lot of effort to do daily content. And for those of you who've been around long enough, you remember back in the Roy's cell phone days, I did three videos a day. 
three videos a day, every day, 365. Um, man, those were the days. <laughs> oh, of course, editing, my editing work was a lot easier. Heath Miller, thank you for the $3 super chat, brother. Yeah, I mean, most people say yes, but there's some people that be concerned for your mental well-being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, uh, part of, uh, so, so part of that, part of that, I'm horrible to getting back around comments. I'll see a comment like, oh, I really want to take and answer that comment. It's gone. It's, it's, it's gone. I forget what video it's on. If I'm not just direct about getting on a comment, of course, the negative comments, those are the easy ones to just like, oh, 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 oh block, right? Like, and then I don't think about them. But some of you ask really great questions or would like me to illustrate more on a particular topic. It doesn't even have to be a project, so to speak, like a build. It could be a process, a very specific process that someone's struggling with out there that gets a lot of upvotes. I can do a very specific video right then and there in real time on it. Well, as real time as I can with the editing and, uh, you know, just do like those one takes, almost like a shop help tip, uh, you know, almost like a shop, you know, a pro tip series. But instead of it being a pro tip, it's just, again, it's out there to be helpful to you all out there, the community, and, and just do that for a while, right? Because a lot of the times the things that you guys ask are not that difficult for me to illustrate. If I'm in the shop anyhow, it's five minute deviation from my day take five minutes out and I could answer a question and put out a piece of content that would specifically suit somebody or a lot of people that have that same kind of question, right? That's that same, uh, that same burning desire, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it would be a great idea. I think it could be something to put out there. Um, but it seems like most people think it's all right. I haven't read too many negatives mm -hmm. as of yet, but of course the screen's a little far away. Yeah. Uh, G. Taylor says, wouldn't be like Roy to overburden himself? No, not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, not at all. <laughs> oh. Manga12 says, especially if it's going to cut into your working time for putting food on the table. Uh, Eric Jawiziak <laughs> says, if you can keep up with it and not burn out, it would be awesome. Huh. On Front Forge, I like the daily concept, but don't let it own you. Yeah, yeah, uh, w which is good because it can, it can. And, and that's why I say I'd, I'd be, I would be doing it for a brief period of time. If it goes good for 30 days, we'd move it on to 60 days. If it did good for 60 and I still feel good about it, we'd go on with 90. Um, the reason why I kind of want to do that is it, it would be nice to be able to, like, get, again, to answer some people's questions in real time and illustrate it. I suck at typing. I suck at just writing up. It's just it's not my thing. It's not, so it's a drudgery for me to answer comments or be long-winded in the comment section for people. I'm bad at it. I'm just bad. More than like a sentence or two, which I does, which when someone's asking you a more complex thing or asking more of a question about you or emailing me, right? Emailing me a question with their life story. I can read it, but to reply to it and try to address all points is just, yeah, for me, it's like, I'll do, it's I'd, I'd rather have my hands nailed to the forge somewhere like you know <laughs> it's just it's no um it, it's it's a drudgery so I do much better with this verbal communication but that's kind of hard to do mm -hmm. when it's one-sided when it's a one-sided <laughs> deal right oh, it's kind of, a, kind of a hard thing to do and I only put out videos once every three days or every two days or so Kyle Jones suggested doing it five days a week that could be a little more balanced. Yeah, can do it five days a week and then take the weekends off or whatever. Yeah, that could be a good balance. So, yeah. Obviously, if it's a project video, I might miss a day or so. The point is to try to make it more relevant because right now, right now, the way I produce content, I batch shoot content. So I'll do four or five or six videos in a day, and then maybe the next day I'll shoot four or five, six videos in a day, and maybe the next day I might shoot two videos in a day, and then I don't touch YouTube again for a month. And I, I work in the forge at everything else I have to do. And that works out okay for me, but then for someone who had a question about like, hey, how do you punch a hole in, you know, bronze? Well, 
I could have answered that question for you. You just have to wait six to eight weeks for a reply. That's how, right? And then but by then it's it's not helpful content. It's not relevant anymore. It may be relevant, or I have to turn it into a video that will have evergreen type content, right? To where it's going to last for the decades. And I have to make it so in general for anybody to watch it, um, which becomes difficult. You know, becomes difficult to do. So hopefully I can do something like that. That might work out better this winter um, or coming soon, anyhow, fall season. So, and good night to everybody who's leaving and have to take off. Like, love y'all. Hey, Taylor, see ya. Yep, God bless you. Thank you for being here. So, definitely didn't intend on being on here this long. I thought yeah, we were going to do like a 30 minute QA. And yeah, your phone's, your phone still has 58%. I don't yeah. know about mine. Who Probably knows what yours has? Maybe it's so. a little worse. Daniel Celtic says, good, maybe three to four a week. Does okay. Jessica need yeah. her own cup? I put this one. We're sharing. Yeah, she always shares off my cup, so. Sharing is caring. To some of you, that may grow to you out, but <laughs> other things we do would grow to you out, too, so. <laughs> See how her face just got all red <laughs> and blushing? She's about as red as her shirt now. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I can bring oh. my own cup in the car and I'll still drink off of his. So. Yeah, she'll literally have her own cup in the car on a long car trip. And I'll reach over to mine and mine gets lighter every time I reach it over to get a sip. And that's not just me. She's like, oh, Doop. Even when I stopped doing <laughs> it's it, gone. it's like, you drink out of my cup, half of it's gone. I'm like, I actually didn't, but okay. <laughs> you can bend it on me. Yeah. <laughs> that TikTok thing, huh? Uh, Might be a thing. Rob, Rob Huff said... That TikTok thing might be a thing if, if it's, it's still a thing. a thing. I'm old, don't know. <laughs> that, that's, an, that's an interesting one. I've, I've posted some videos to TikTok. I don't foresee myself going on there very long mm -hmm. at all. Kind of, just to be honest, like, not my crowd. Just not my crowd, so... Mm -hmm. Just, I, I don't have any interest in what other people, there, I, I follow seven people on there that I, a couple, few of them I knew, and a couple looked interesting, and the rest of TikTok as a platform, well, <laughs> let's just say, uh, <laughs> you're digging real deep into somewhere crusty. <laughs> let's just say that, you're digging real deep into somewhere crusty, I won't mention where, but it, it's, it's yeah, I don't know. I ain't got much. I ain't got much love with the with the TikTok, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wayne, if you want to send me a cup, I would be happy to have a cup. <laughs> he has a stockpile of them. <laughs> oh, he does. He's got he a. Does, he's he got a. <laughs> he's got a stockpile. There you go. Oh, but. Yeah, I don't know. Anybody who anybody who gets the platform gets TikTok. They got it all figured out. Great. That's cool. I think I'm just I'm more into the community aspect now. I'm an old man on the inside. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. I call it different things. That's how you know you're getting too old. I start calling it Tic Tac and <laughs> Tick Tink and Give me one of those TikToks. Yeah, I like. I like. Well, time to look on what's on the old TikTok. I'm like, I mean, I mean TikTok. I was like, ah, what is it? So yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna be one of those guys that'll probably phase out at some point. This will be my. This will be my biggest modern thing that I do. It's called YouTube, and that's not modern anymore. So, what's well, YouTube's like? What, 15 years old? I think it is. I think it's a 15-year-old platform, and I've only been on it for five, so I'll probably ride it until it's no more. And then yep. go live as a hobbit somewhere. And then go live as a hobbit somewhere <laughs> in, my in my latter years. Or but they also so. be on, on the, I can't even guess what they Who knows? What they, keep, they keep abbreviating things, so it'll just be like, buh. It'll be like, aren't you on buh? <laughs> <laughs> You're not cool if you're not on Buh. <laughs> Manga help. Manga hope never goes belly up. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I hope so too. I hope I hope the amount of footage I've been put out there will be 
archived or something. Mm-hmm. Yep. Black Collar, thank you for the $5 super chat, by the way. He says, he's yeah, been thank you. with my wholesome trolling comments, so don't feel too bad if he is missing your comments. Laffy face. <laughs> <laughs> Not taking advantage of all the comedic value there is to be had. <laughs> yeah. Rob Huff, Roy Fong Shuffle <laughs> on the anvil. No. <laughs> <laughs> now premiere on TikTok. Uh, now <laughs> you'd fit right in, but no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would fit right in, wouldn't I? I'd fit right in. By golly, yeah. <laughs> now what? What I <laughs> what, what what I really wanted to say uh, about TikTok? You know, I I'll just say, I'll just say it. You guys will just have to have a sense of humor. If you don't, well, this will strike you the wrong way. But anytime, anytime I try to go, because there's not a direct route to just my account to see the numbers on the account or just the people you're following, it always does, like, suggested for you. And, like, I wasn't even on the platform 12 seconds. 12 seconds on the platform. And what was suggested for me is something I most definitely am not into. I'm like, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Ah, oh, y'all going to hell. You know, that was, that was my thoughts. So I was like, you're all going to hell. You know, so I popped open TikTok. I'm like, oh, man. I'm like, I don't know. It's going to be, this isn't going to be my jam, man. And so I posted some videos up there. They've done, I don't know, some of them have 1,000 views, some of them have 7,000 views, some of them have 100 views, some of them have 200 views. There's not much of a community there. So I was like, I puffed on way more than he was bargaining for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know it's pretty bad if Rob Huff is saying, "You're going to hell," you know, when he looks at the phone. <laughs> I would pay to hear Rob say that. I, I would. I'd pay you, Rob. I really would. And <laughs> you gotta let me film you <laughs> looking at your phone. Oh, you're going to hell. You know. Like insert that somewhere in the video. Oh, yeah. I have people right now saying, I knew it. I knew he was one of those types. Yeah. They like probably just video shot of that so they can like use it some in off for yeah. some time. <laughs> oh, if y'all want to see something real hilarious related to that, it's a, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll have to, again, you've got to have a sense of humor, people. So, like, don't take yourself and life so seriously here. But go check out Studio C. Puritan roommate. Mm -hmm. That is so, so funny on so many levels because I have met people like that. And so it's, it's so hilarious. You guys have got to check, check that out. Studio C, Puritan mm -hmm. roommate. You can type it up in your search results yeah, however have, you uh, like. They now. have three of them in total. It's like <laughs> three a of mini series. <laughs> it's like every time, every time. And, and uh, trust me, this has a point. <laughs> this has a point. Every time somebody comments that I'm not subscribing to you because of your channel name, every time somebody comments, the video was great until I found out you're a Christian. Every time that happens, I want to mess with them so bad. I want to mess with them like the Puritan roommate. Got to watch it. You do. <laughs> it's funny because that's that's who I see in my head. I'm like, oh, so that's how the world views me. <laughs> <laughs> Rob says, if I run forage and Roy tolerates my heathen ways, then y'all are good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we tolerate you. We just tolerate you. It's it's rough, but we but we got big hearts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's funny. Is there's again, people people who don't know us very well will be <laughs> popping in on this stream later. Like, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you say that about Rob? Who's this Rob guy? I need to defend his honor. His heathen <laughs> honor. <laughs> defend the heathen honor. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> Every time that happens, the angel gets its wings. What? <laughs> well, yeah. If you guys check out the Studio C Puritan roommate, trust me, it's funny. It's like, it's literally, I think that's what the world thinks that 
every Christian is like. It's literally like that. It's it's funny. I have to laugh because I'd be right there along with it. I'd be like, <laughs> I'm like, nope, that's not how it gets it done. But you need hey. some of those things of your own. You know, you've been quite quoting those movies. Yeah, yeah. I I've wanted to do some skits like that. To be honest, there's been some times I've wanted to do a little bit of acting and, and just like like pop open one of my videos with the Bible. You know, but just do like a skit, you know, <laughs> where like the, the Bible's cut out, though. It's got a hammer in it. You know, it's one of those fake Bibles that you would put a pistol in or something like that. But but instead, it's got my hand hammer. It's like, so let's open our book and begin forging today. Pull out the hammer and go you know, just enough just to kind of grind people who really hate Christian people the wrong way. Just for fun. Really big book. Just to mess like, with people like the family Bibles. Yeah. One of those big ones. Those big like, ones. Wear a church collar. Like get like tie tie the good. whole thing. Yeah. That would be a that dress would be up. Dirty. Oh man, it would be so good to mess with people like that. I'd I'd thin the herd. You, you I'd would. lose so many subscribers. You would lose a lot. It'd be good. <laughs> Black collar says, Hey Roy, your fly press is tipping over. Is it? <laughs> your eyeballs are crooked. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the five dollar super chat. <laughs> Wayne Hines says, "Forge a Bible." Longa there you go, forge a Bible. Yeah, that'd be going. Manga says, "Dressed like a pilgrim." <laughs> <laughs> Buckled shoes, the whole thing. I need to do it. <laughs> Tic tac. <laughs> Roy cuts the center out of a two hundred dollar Bible. <laughs> That'd be the worst. I'll be hated by everyone. Yeah. Do you understand? Like you, you've got to understand that in in my position, I'll be both hated by other Christian folk, and I will be hated by pagan folk. Like I will be hated down both sides of the aisle. <laughs> It's like there's, from yeah, the there's, there's the no way, and, and then there's the people who don't take life so seriously and, and don't take everything so verbatim. Will be laughing their socks off and have a good time, and I'll make subscribers for life like that. You know, make good friends for life. But <laughs> but until then, until we weed out those, I will have I will have up both sides, man. I'll be fighting an unending battle both both ways the Sunday. Oh. <laughs> Janet McCombs says, do it right before the sweat block giveaway so she'll have better odds. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're doing there. I see what you're doing there. Smart. Redbeard's Forge, I'm okay with Christians as long as they try to convert me. As long uh -huh. as they try to convert me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure, I'll do that. <laughs> I got to tell you all a story. This is a fun one. Uh, you know, this, this is a fun one. I met a guy, met, met a kid at... Uh, at a forging event. I'm being very aloof with this just because I don't want them to, if they were a subscriber, I don't want them to feel like they're singled out. Um, I don't think they are. But I had this conversation. I had just got done demonstrating at this forging event, and <laughs> this, this kid came up to me, and you know, and I say things like, hey, God bless you. Thank you guys for watching, you know, watching the demonstration. Thank you for watching and, and, and sticking with me or whatever, right? Things like that. And I just do that. It's, it's part of my nature. It's like me saying, hey, bud, or anything else. It's just part of my speech. Well, <laughs> this guy come up to me afterwards, and he said, he said, he's like, I just want you to look, just to let you know that I'm an atheist, and I'm like, well, nice to meet you, atheist dude. Like, what's your name? <laughs> you know, he didn't even lead with his name or anything. He just led left with his title. And I'm like, well, nice to meet you. Yeah, it's kind of strange. I usually say hi. My name's Roy. You know, <laughs> when when I meet somebody, I don't usually lead with that, but that's okay. You could do that. And then, uh, so so I asked the guy what his name was, and and uh, um, the, and he told me. And he's like, he's like, he's like, I'm an atheist because I don't have a soul. And I'm like, I'm like, well, you want a cookie? And I just, just I'm like, you want a cookie? I was struggling real hard to find out how this relates 
to my demonstration that had nothing to do with anything whatsoever. I think I forged, I think I forged a leaf bracket or something like that uh, during the uh, during the demonstration. Um, and, and again, and, and so so, and I'm like, he's like, well, I'm a ginger, so gingers don't have souls. And I'm like, yeah, you do. Hate to tell you, yeah, you do. <laughs> It's like, it's like, it was, it was so funny though. He just, he was constantly, he was like on a different playing field. He was on a different playing field. I was just like, well, I don't know what to do. I mean, it's like, well, I mean, it's good to know you. He's like, well, you're not offended by that? I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, it don't matter to me at all. <laughs> what, what happens to you personally? <laughs> I'm like, you know, and, uh, but anyways, he, yeah, after that, like, yeah, I saw him at several, several, uh, several events after that and got on just fine with the guy, but he just mm -hmm. felt like he had to stick it to me, yeah. express it to me, that he wasn't going to take none of my Christian ways, okay? <laughs> Keep you in line. <laughs> he had his eyes <laughs> on me. I'm looking at me on the screen. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it, it's interesting. The things that we work up in our minds to be such a big deal and so crucial and go bump at every spook in the dark. Sketchy. <laughs> Gotta let a little wiggle room be in there, peeps. <laughs> Tobacco free catfish says that's a neat story. <laughs> yeah, it's a neat story. It, it was funny. It was funny to me. You may not know it was humorous, but it, just think of how awkward that is if, if you were in just some public gathering space mm -hmm. and there was nothing nothing going on with that and i i, I just remember that right like mm -hmm. it's like you know it's like i i don't come right up to people and be like jesus loves you convert mm -hmm. turn or burn baby <laughs> like i mean i should start doing that <laughs> oh i should shouldn't i i'd be all about it i need to do that I'm doing it at Quad State. Let's do it at Quad State. <laughs> what do you say? This time you won't have a crowd around <laughs> I won't have a crowd around me this time. Let's do it at Quad State. See? I don't know. Every time somebody comes up, I'll be like, turn or burn, baby! <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can grip onto their hand like with a tight, <laughs> you know, away. I've got a fairly good arm, so I can grip on pretty tight to a hand, and then I can grab them by the head, and I'm like... <laughs> you know, give them a good shakedown, like the yeah. power of Christ compels you. Oh, okay. Do that. Yeah. Like I go unconscious. And <laughs> I'm going to get sued. You That's are. what's going to happen if I did that. But uh, that would be so hilarious. Uh, I would have, like, there'd be like an aura around my camp. It'd be like, it'd be like we'd have funk or something. You know what I mean? It'd, it'd be like this big ring oh, yeah. of people that back. stay away. <laughs> Robert Alana said, please exit my personal space, sir. <laughs> uh, it'd be just great. Just go go around shaking other Smith's hands and yell out, turn or burn, baby. That would be so great. <laughs> <laughs> the things I concoct in my mind that I'm sure the Lord says, oh, Lord. It's like, why did I create that guy again? Patrick McGreslin says he likes Pure that, humor. turn and burn. He has not heard that before. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Or run forge, get sanctified, or chicken fried. <laughs> that's a no Dude, that's a shirt. Come on, Troy. Put it on a shirt. I'll buy that one. Have, like, I'll buy that one. On. You don't have to give me that shirt. I will buy that one. <laughs> um, front forge says, are you demonstrating at Quad State? No, I'm not. I'm not demonstrating nothing at Quad State. They've never asked me to demonstrate at Quad State, surprisingly. No, you're in charge of the one even, even, even when I was a, a hometown boy there for many years mm -hmm. and part of the very active in the group, they never asked me. So don't know what's up with that. Newt's says, uh, Newt's Leather and Smithy, where is your, uh, where is everyone? Normally there are hundreds here for your giveaways. Say that again? Newt's Randy. He said, where is everyone? Normally there's hundreds here for your giveaways. They all left about 45, 48 minutes ago. They did. The giveaway was given. Yeah, the giveaway was given. They all left. Now it's the elite group. The elite group, group of blacksmithing ninjas. Homefront Forge says, I'll have to get there this year for sure. Uh, could you imagine? 
I don't know. I better have like a day job planned out or something because I think that would get around pretty fast, wouldn't it? it probably would. No one would ever want to take a class with me ever again. And... Mm -hmm. Hmm. That might be a good exit strategy. <laughs> when you're ready to go full um, yeah. her hermit. Yeah. Well, when I'm ready to go full hermit. There we go. Hobbit. Yeah, yeah, hobbit and yeah, hermit. Yeah, when, when I want to go you. full hobbit mode, I think I'll just do that. I'll just like become unreasonably so. Just mm -hmm. complete creep mode. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can do it, too. That would be great. <laughs> Randy also asked what we're doing next weekend. I have a joke for that one. I'm not going to say. <laughs> Exercising demons. My, that's what we're doing. <laughs> what you doing? It's going to be a great time. <laughs> oh, uh, Let's see here. Next weekend. Man, what are we doing next weekend? Uh, I don't know. Probably trying to get back on the track from having family in town. Yeah, we got some family coming up in town. My sister is coming up from Florida. I ain't seen her in a coon's age. Uh, for those of you around the South, you know what that means, but I have not seen her in a coon's age. So um, it's going to be great to spend a little bit of time with her and uh, her family. She'll be coming up this week, and then, um, yeah, next weekend I'll probably be playing catch-up work, like I seem to always do. <laughs> you can, <laughs> Robert Lars, you can stage a fake exorcism. <laughs> Be good. <laughs> See, I've got plenty of people who would probably play right along with the skit, you know, mm -hmm. to do a skit. But yeah, I guess we better suck it up for professionalism, though, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Until I un unleash my exit strategy. <laughs> what else? Um, we got. See, 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 you're keeping all them comments oh, yourself, yeah. oh. but then you go quiet. What's yeah, going on here? There we go. You can see them right there in your face. He's French. How are the kids and family doing? They're doing, doing good. Doing well. Doing well. Growing like weeds. Mm -hmm. Getting healthier. Now well, they're all healthy and, and they're eating me out of house and home. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely. So uh, I got a lot to keep up with. Got a lot to keep up with. <laughs> yeah, right, right now we're trying to keep our traveling to a minimum because you have a lot on the go. He's in your back ordered a couple of months on trying to get caught up on yeah. stuff that's... Like everything. Yeah. 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 Back ordered on everything, <laughs> like, basically. How do you face that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, like, I, I would like to... Maybe, in my mind, I picture it going this way. That, you know, as time goes along, I will sl slowly but surely become one of those Smiths that just kind of, like, wake up in the morning and sip a cup of coffee and think about some epic forging I'm going to do and then spend nine months working on one little thing and, uh, you know, get it done. But the reality is <laughs> I have three kids and that won't happen for another 30 years. <laughs> that's, that's the reality. And so just keeping up with everything, all of the finances and you got to hustle, got to have a lot of drive and, uh, you know, which it's fine. I've got a bunch of drive, got a bunch of hustle. But it's it's a lot of it's a lot of work, and so it keeps me hopping around here. Businesses, businesses doing well. So, black collar ironworks. Thank you for another five dollars super chat, sir. Says burnt pot pie. I will probably want to burn a little bit before the turn. <laughs> <laughs> a little crispy. Black collar wants to get a little close to the singeing heat. <laughs> he wants to be pulled out last moment. Chris Schaefer says, will you guys do this all night until good night fire? This is entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad it's entertaining. So Probably go to a, let's see, we're only, what, seven minutes away from a full three hours? Probably go. Yeah, we'll probably go for the full three, three hours. hours. Yeah, why not? We're here. Dinner. Why deprive you of three minutes? <laughs> 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 what is it? Oh, yeah, seven minutes yeah. of your life that you could get back doing something, anything else other than watching this boob. And this purdy goop <laughs> on YouTube here. Robert Lonis, you have a bunch of hustle. It is an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So uh, that brings that brings uh, 
brings an interesting point I like to point out. I was going to do like a regular like a regular Roy rant, but then I just decided not to mess with the mess with the video uh, to, to make the video. I had a negative comment or kind of comment what two weeks ago, three weeks ago. This is one of those times where I don't feel as strongly about it now. So like I could bring it up and I'm not all like, Bruh! you know, like that about it. But uh, basically, it, basically, it made some insinuations about my, you know, my company's work ethic as far as, you know, how much, like, how I'm doing projects. How do I reconcile doing projects on YouTube, right? Uh, I'm doing projects on YouTube, but I haven't put out other people's orders yet. And I don't know who he's referencing because he doesn't know any of my clients. Um, but maybe, maybe he knows one or two of them and he has the inside scoop, right? Uh, very doubtful, uh, but that's the thing about YouTube, right? I like to tell people YouTube time is not real. It's just not. It's not real time. Like, like right now, everybody believes Alex Steele is in Europe. I doubt he is. I bet you he's back in the states. You don't know when he flies or he go when he comes and he goes. You won't know when he picks up his dog from the vet or when he sneezes into his elbow. You you won't you won't know jack about that, right? You know what the creator of the channel chooses for you to know, right? Like you get this portal into our lives and we're very sharing. We are way more sharing about our lives on YouTube than a lot of folks, right? A lot of creators, especially top tier creators, right? People are way up there in the space. You know, jack about them. You just don't, right? And it's because it's not real time, right? It, it, it's not real time. I bat shoot videos, you know? So I bat shoot videos. So a video I'm making today, you won't see for four weeks sometimes. Sometimes two months, three months even, right? I could be working on content right now. And, and in the meanwhile, nobody has a single clue what I do on the day-to-day -day and, and what I do on the business, right? Like nobody, because I'm going to, it's pretty boring, to be honest with you. There, there's, there's a lot of boring times, right? There's a lot of down times. Um, there's a lot of fun times, too. There's a lot of times I just pick up and we leave and we go out somewhere and we go for a hike and, and, and we do whatever. And sometimes we choose to share some of that information and other times we don't, right? It's just... It's the way it works. You know, YouTube, it, it's one thing if I was like the Truman Show here, right? And everybody was sitting here with an, you know, an eye in the sky, getting to watch every moment of every second of my life. But that's not how that works. So be real cautious when you look at people's channels and you see a certain amount of stuff. Because, it, it, and this will bring me into something else, be cautious about thinking that somebody's outdoing you, so to speak, right? This is something that I fall into sometimes, like with Instagram. I will see an Instagram post or I'll see some YouTube videos sometimes, and I will actually feel bad about myself because I haven't posted anything in like a few days, right? And then I get on and I find an Instagram or YouTube will serve me all this content like, everybody's been pushing content like crazy, right? And I feel like somehow I got behind, got left behind. I missed out on something, right? Um, you know, you'll see people are making hammers or something online, or I do, and it takes me forever to make a hammer, one hammer. It takes me forever to make one singular hammer. And I pop online, I see somebody else, I just finished up 57 hammers. Like, yeah, but they might... Like, they might be doing daily posts of something that's been curated, that they chopped up, a process. Oh, it looks like they're forging hammers every single waking moment of every single day. And if they are, that's not much of a life, right? Like, they don't get any sleep, they don't get any personal time, no relation. And so I call bupkis. It's, no, no, that's not real. They have times that they schedule their posts and they put their posts out there, right? While they're doing other stuff. They're out riding their jet ski. They're doing whatever they're doing, right? Whatever it may be. They might be in there picking their booger in their forge. For all you know, you, you don't know. What you've got is a, a little portal 
And that portal can make you feel lesser about your own stuff, right? So when I'm pushing out content, you see me pushing out stuff, and you're like, wow, how's Roy find the time? I've got the same 24 hours a day like anybody else does. I'm not time warping. I'm not a lizard person, right? <laughs> I don't know, maybe I am. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not popping in and out of this reality. And, and you know, there's, there's no smoke and mirrors or magic to it. It's just the, the, the time dilation, the lag that you get with YouTube and with social media is in such a way that sometimes it may look like, wow, he's been really active. And then other times it may look like I'm not active at all. Right? But... It's, it's just the way the thing works, but it's really hard to, you know, infer that. So, like, if you're out there, and let's say you gave a creator some money for something, say some creator out there, Instagram or wherever, <coughs> who makes items for a living, right? And you ordered an item from them. The worst thing you can do for your psyche, this, this mind game up here, is to continue to follow them online while your order's being processed. Because you're going to see, we put out 50 hammer orders. Mine should be in the mail. Mm -hmm. He might have 2,000 hammer orders, and yours is one, yours is hammer order 1,998, right? Like, that might be your, your hammer order that he has to put out, and he's working on batch 50, right? But it, unless they convey that and say that in every single posting, like, hey, I'm working on batch whatever, you know, you, you won't have you won't have that, you know, recollection uh, mm -hmm. of what's actually going on. You won't have the true time of it. So, I don't know how he based. But that was a long-winded rant. But Tim, big dog porch. Hi. Hey, Tim. <laughs> Good to have you. No, S same thing. Um, same thing about YouTube videos, right? Like you can have somebody say, "Hey, I'm going to try to get out this video." And it might take them a couple months to get out that video. You know, you, you don't know what happens in their life or their time. Um, and then it comes out a couple months later, and it kind of misses the mark. And people are like, hey, why did you put out such and such video? Right? And it's because YouTube is not in real time. <laughs> it doesn't exist, exist in the real world. Mm -hmm. I still put my pants on one leg at a time. It's an alternate timeline. Yeah, it's an alternate uh -huh. timeline. That's what it is. <laughs> YouTube's ran by lizard people. <laughs> might have some people freaking out. Who knows? Jason so. Boros says, I jump back and forth between projects all the time. It sounds silly to say it wouldn't be okay. Quite often, it is easier to work on multiple things when you need the same tools. Yep. And in my shop, I'm a rising tide in my shop. So... <laughs> Red Beard's Forge confirmed. <laughs> oh. Rob Huff says a video may or may not have posted in the middle of Roy's class once. <laughs> for the honor, Forge, please know, Roy, I come to you for a break from all that. All right. <laughs> oh, but yeah, yeah, it, you know that's how that's how YouTube that's how YouTube is though. It's it's a it's a inefficient information platform. It's an information where you're seeing everything not in real time, unless it's a live stream like this. But heck, I, we've had people come in and comment because YouTube, like after a giveaway live stream, like, oh, pick me, pick me. Mm -hmm. And it's like the live stream was over six days ago, mm -hmm. right? But YouTube served it to them as a fresh piece of content, mm -hmm. like as if the live stream was still going on. That just shows you, right? Like you can't you can't believe everything that uh, you see on YouTube a lot of times. So, Techromatic says, Roy, have you made any bells? I couldn't see it in your playlist. Bells? bells. No, I have not made any bells. Um, I have, but not for YouTube. I haven't made any for YouTube. So I do plan on, however, making a bell. Um, a class bell for Goshen, Ohio. I do plan on doing that, but we'll be doing that down at Goshen uh, when, when we do that, forging a bell out of a old acetylene cylinder. Or I think it's an acetylene. I don't know what type of cylinder it is. It's old. It's been sitting forever, like 30 years forever, out in the weed lane. Kenny? Hey, Campbell Kenny Campbell Jr. Jr. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Bellows Boy. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good night, Boar. Heath French reminded us we hit the three-hour mark. You are quite right. You are right, Heath. Thank you very, very much. Everybody give that channel member a nice hand clap. We'll have to do another channel stream, channel member stream. So how many names do we have out there? 75, I think, now? Six, I thought it was 68, but I don't know. I might be wrong. No, we had some come in at the end, so I think we had 75 up there. So, so yeah, so the channel membership's, like, growing, so that's really good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing how many people don't check the date on, on videos sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. So it, on evergreen content, forging a hook, forging a, a, a whatever, a leaf, a blade, a whatever, that type of content, that's relevant no matter what. But on stuff like live streams, like this content is only relevant for the day in which it was posted. So um, 20 years from now, sure, somebody could go back and watch a three-hour live stream and glean some nuggets of information, but... Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Yeah. Very specific. Yep. All the time. Mm -hmm. Most of it. Yeah. yeah. Most of the time. Yep, it is. Mm -hmm. We need more Roy Bell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I ought to do a bell at some point, huh? That would be cool, yeah. Yep. Forge a bell in here. I made it I made a bell and I made a candle snuffer and they're very similar to the same thing with forging a pipe, but that might be something to do. And it could be a fun way of giving that guillotine tool on the fly press. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Around, little, yep, giving it a go, it. just doing a small bell, mm -hmm. little jingle bells type things. Mm -hmm. yep. That would be good. <coughs> so, anyways, all right. I think we're about ready, aren't we, honey? Yeah, I think we should go get some dinner. And yep, yep, we're going to go started. grab some dinner just like Wiley's doing. <laughs> so, Wiley, thank you for being here. Um, yeah, thank you everyone who's been a part of this stream. Thank you everybody who's done you know, done the super chatting. Thank you for the channel members that joined. Um, that's awesome. Uh, I, I do want to put one last little FYI out there. If anybody does purchase, well, we're having the computer that works on the, that I use for the plasma cutter. And it also is what we use for our live streams. That's the computer that's down right now. Hopefully we'll have that up and going sometime this upcoming week. Um, usually I've been, I've been doing real good about getting my turnaround down time by like three days, right? Like mm -hmm. getting, if you purchased a bunch of blanks, I'd get it out in three days time. I've got a bunch on the shelf, but if, if somebody purchases a whole bunch of blanks, it might be a little bit longer, like a week turnaround time right now, but uh, I'm hoping that's all it will be, uh, to, to get that going. So <laughs> Rob, uh, take care all turn or burn. <laughs> That's just so great. Uh -huh. I, just love, I just love hearing that. <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, so just, just putting that little bit of information out there for anybody who was interested in doing the blanks. It will take us a little bit longer um, to, to get any of the blacksmithing blanks out. But we greatly appreciate every last one of you, all your patronage, all of your time that you invested in us this evening. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you all in the next live stream, July 2nd, right? That's correct, yes. July 2nd, rain or shine, hopefully shine. <laughs> we will see you all then. So thank you all so much. God bless each and every last one of you, and we'll catch you next time. Bye now.